Mike Pinnock. Here. Richard Laughlin. Here. Barry Kaiser. Here. Joe Salinas. Chairman's statement. Welcome to the December meeting of the Fredericksburg Historic Review Board. I'm Sharon Joseph. The Fredericksburg Historic District and landmark properties stand as a testament to the Central Texas rich and layered history. Municipalities have long recognized that historic preservation is a vital tool for maintaining livable and sustainable communities. The Historic Preservation Officer and this board are taxed with translating this broad goal into detailed technical decisions about how to manage change in the historic district. The Historic Review Board is an advisory board of volunteers appointed by City Council. Approval by this board results in a certificate of appropriateness and is required for any work on properties in the historic district or any city landmarks. In considering whether to approve or disapprove an application, the board is guided by the Secretary of Interior's standards for rehabilitation and the City of Fredericksburg design guidelines. If anyone present wishes to speak in favor of or in opposition to any item on today's agenda, please register on the persons to be heard sheet that's on the table in the foyer. Did you already pick it? You already picked it up, okay. It's not necessary to sign up to speak if you are an owner of or a representative for a project on the agenda. You will be called on when the case is called. We ask that you limit your comments to three minutes. Approval by this board does not take place of any type of permit. Permits must be obtained for all work. No work of any type is, to, is permitted to be started without obtaining appropriate city permits after the certificate of appropriateness has been issued by the historic preservation officer. Okay, do we have any public comment? No one signed up for public comment, so we'll move on to the historic preservation officer's report. Anna? Good evening, Chair and Board. Um, the one thing I've got listed here is the Texas Historical Commission is having their annual conference this year. They didn't have it last year, or they did it remotely last year. So this year they're going to be back in person in Austin, um, February 2nd through the 4th. There's a, a few pre conference sessions that I'm going to be attending um, with David Shields from the Pioneer Museum. And so I'll send that agenda, and if you're interested, um, there'll be some really good sessions. Um, on that. And also, our, we are a certified local government through the THC, and our annual report will be due in February. So I'll be giving you guys a copy of that as I submit that to the THC as well. Thank you, Anna. See if I have any questions for Anna. Okay. Moving on to approval of the minutes of the November meeting. They're in your packet. Any changes or corrections? Hearing no changes or corrections, the minutes stand approved as presented. Moving on to the consent agenda. The items under the consent agenda are deemed by the Historic Preservation Officer to be routine in nature and will be approved in one motion of the board, adopting the staff findings and recommendations as part of the approval. The items on the consent agenda will not be discussed. Any member of the board or of the public wishing to discuss an item that's in the consent agenda may request that that be removed and placed on the individual consideration agenda. On the consent agenda, we have application 21-133 for 212 West Center Street, application 21-140 for 608 North Lano Street, we have application 21-146 for 106 South Lincoln. We have application 21-149 for 105 West Travis. We have application 21-150 for 115 North Crockett. We have application 121-137 for 112 East Austin. And we have application 21-142 for 114 West Austin. Does anyone on the board or as a member of the public wish to remove any of these properties from the consent agenda? 
Seeing none, I'll call for a motion to accept the consent. Oh. Okay. You don't have to go anywhere. Just, I'm refused. just consider yourself recused. Okay. And don't make a motion. <laughs> so I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda items A through G. Second. So David, motion, Mike, second, each you. Okay. Okay. All in favor of accepting accepting the consent agenda, say aye. All opposed, same sign. Okay, the consent agenda is approved. So if you are here for an item on the consent agenda, means your application has been approved. You are welcome to stay, but you are also welcome to go. Thank you for being here. Moving on to the individual consideration agenda, we begin with application 21-144 for 302 North Bowie. We'll begin with Anna. Is there someone here for the property? Okay. Well, Anna will present and then we'll ask you to come to the podium and address her concerns. So you can wait until she's through. Go ahead, Anna. Oh, sorry. Application 21 144 at 302 North Bowie Street is an R1 zoned property with a low rating. And the applicant is requesting approval to install new fencing around the property line, including a rear yard, rear yard eight foot tall horizontal pattern wood fence that steps down to a six foot uh, tall fence on the side yard, and requesting a front yard fence uh, made of garden loop. Uh, since that time, the applicant has submitted. Since the time of the packet, the applicant has submitted a different style for the front yard fence. And so staff recommendation, uh, eight, eight foot tall fences are the max height allowed by zoning and are usually more appropriate in commercial or industrial settings, not residential. Staff recommends a six foot tall fence around the sides and rear of the property. Uh, front yard fences are not recommended unless there is a safety concern or noxious use and that would, and they should be no more than three feet tall and be period appropriate to the style of the house. The staff does not recommend approval of the front yard fence per section 32112B and C. Please. Are you through, Diana? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to run ahead of you, okay. So there's a change from what we have in the packet in the fencing, is that what you said? So we have pictures, hang on one second, sorry. So this is now the proposed front yard fence. Okay. Please introduce yourself. And this is our clients here on the table that we have to be able to change. And they would like to put in a fence in the backyard, starting with the eight foot um, on the north west side of the house versus this side right here. Or the B was red or black. Oh, not at all. Okay, thank you. Okay, it would go. The Turn on your mic, mic. It would. The seventy-five feet would still be there 
eight foot fence? Yes, sir. And then what would would it con connect to the house? Um, well, the seventy five feet right here, um, there's an older house that is that side of the front of the left that that photo there. Um, it was uh, brought down and I was I built it such for like a forty five foot transition to close the foot and then come back up the last four feet and six inches up to what she would see. So it would come all the way to the property line. Um, no, it, well, on that bottom picture there, it would be an eight foot fence from there over to the property line, and then go all the way down to the property line to the back of the property, and then head back forward towards West Schubert, 75 feet at that point, the last 24 feet basically would be close to that. Do you have a picture of the offending property that they need the eight foot fence for? It's the roadie. <clears throat> it's the roadie house on Schubert. Let's see if I can pull it up. That that's good enough, Anna. Thanks. Just wanted to get an idea. Questions, guys? Yeah, while you're doing that, uh, is the property that your client owns, is it the one that has the hot tub pretty near the fence? Yeah. Okay. So does yours have it? And they're going to live there full time? Yep. So it's a B&B &B on, the, on the west side, that's correct? Right. And then what about on the south side? Where you have South seventy five foot of eight foot fence, and how does that? Okay. But um, the north side. Is it the north? South side. Okay. So there are houses right here in this corner, down from the east side. Okay. The, okay. These are the people we may take down the fence. We made them take down a fence. It wasn't a fence fence. It was a, it was a wall. It was art wall. Is that what they called it? An art wall? Okay. And is your proposal for a horizontal fence? That's you, what they um, they can go with the length of the Make a motion to approve as presented without the front yard fence. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yeah. Oh, okay, I, mine. I, I do have a question. Of, I mean, we've had a pretty consistent policy of six foot fences. Are we deciding as a board tonight that a short term rental is a noxious use? I mean, is that is that what we're doing? Because I don't know this house could sell tomorrow, the next week or a year from now and all of a sudden we have eight foot fences and I understand privacy and there's this balance between being neighborly and being and having privacy and uh, I've asked for an eight foot fence before before this board and and was denied in that short term rental was on my fence and the more I thought about it I thought you know what's wrong I mean part of the problem we have in this tension is we are wanting more and more privacy and I get that uh, but it also destroys the neighborhood feeling being neighborly and knowing people at that short term rental might be sold to somebody that takes it out of a short term rental. Everybody thinks the short term rentals are going to last forever, and I don't think they are. Uh, so, I, it just as a discussion matter, I uh, I think we need to really have a sh strong showing of something being noxious before we start building walls around our houses. Thank you, Mike. Any other discussion? Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Yeah. So it's four to two. Okay. It's approved. Thank you. Okay, application 21-141-403 West Austin. Anna? <clears> 
<clears throat> application 21-141 at 403 West Alston has C1 zoning and the um, main structure is rated high. The applicant is requesting approval to build two new one bedroom houses that will be used as short-term rentals with similar footprint and design with board and batten siding, metal roofs, stone accent pieces. It will measure 16 feet at the ridge and materials to match existing addition to the main historic house. And the design of the proposed new structure meets the design standards for materials, differentiation, and compatibility of style and form. The parking is appropriately placed, behind, placed at the back of the lot. Staff recommends approval based on the above reference sections of the design guidelines and standards. For the design guidelines and standards for lot coverage, the new building should be at least 15 feet from the existing. As proposed, they are only 10 feet. And this recommendation is in keeping with the design guidelines standard 3.41E. Do have a representative for the property? Please join us. Please introduce yourself. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. How many existing uh, rentals are on the currently on the property? So two two only. How many occupants in the the two that you have now? Anna, do you have a uh, layout of the houses around it, left, right, and rear? So can you address Anna's statement about being 15 feet? And, yeah.
Thank you. Did you have pictures of the neighborhood? But isn't that what Larry, isn't that what you asked for? Yeah, I think I saw it. She put up again. Oh, I'm sorry. I John, were you the one that did the restoration preservation on the structure? You did a fantastic job. Yeah, you really did. Or, or the builder did, whoever was doing it. Designer. What you did to the original structure, I really, really admire. It's a great job. Other questions, comments, for Mr. Zook? If they're not, I'll entertain a motion. I move to approve application 21141 uh, with the conditions and limitations cited by staff findings and recommendation. Okay. Second. Thank you, Mike. Any other discussion? Y'all have any other questions? Anybody? All in favor say aye. Opposed, same sign? Aye. Okay. So you understand the application is approved with staff recommendations of moving the lot, moving that, the having the 15 feet, right? Okay. So if there's a problem with the fire marshal, you need to go back to Anna and work, figure out how to have worked out. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Application 21 152 505 North Pecan. Anna? Application 21 152 at 505 North Pecan is an R1 zoned property and it's an empty lot, so it has a low rating. And the applicant is requesting a certificate of appropriateness to build a new single family residence on the empty lot. The house's highest ridge line is 23 feet 3 inches, and it's over the garage, which is set back from the street by 50 feet. The house can be considered a hill country modern style with the use of gavel and roof, stucco, limestone walls, large bronze colored windows. The house's front facade is segmented into three sections to break up the mass of the 3,600 square foot house. Hey, is there a representative for the property? Recommendation, Sharon, sorry. The I'm sorry. Staff, staff's recommendation, the lot coverage and orientation section, the lot was recently created by separating it from a larger lot facing Milam Street. It is a shallow lot, which does not allow for the traditional building pattern of the neighborhood. The contributing structures on this block are, are on deeper lots, and so the, house, um, so the house has a front to rear orientation instead of, a, uh, instead of the wide front facade on the sides, meaning it takes up the majority of the width of the lot. The design of materials, the design of the proposed new structure meets the design standards for materials, differentiation, compatibility of style and form with a front porch and traditional design features as cited above. The garage has been pushed back from the front facade and staff recommends the two car garage use two separate doors to help reduce the prominence of the garage. This recommendation is in keeping with the Fredericksburg Historic Design Guidelines and Standards Thank you, Anna. I apologize for calling from the applicant before you were through, and I apologize to you for stand, making you stand up there. So please introduce yourself and tell us about your project.
Thank you. Questions, board members? Questions or comments? Anybody? If you went to two, Anna, this is for Anna. If you went to a two garage doors, wouldn't you have to make it larger? You probably don't have the room, do you? On the structure? Put a column in it, you're going to have to expand the, the size of the building. Jane, what size garage door do you have right now? Yeah, it'd be too tight. You'd have to go to two eights. And you'd have to expand the width of it. I'll make a motion to approve application 21152 as presented. I'll second. We have, an we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yeah, just one uh, great design. Uh, the only question I had was the ridge height of the garage. What was that? Is it going to be 18 feet or less or? Plate height. Or is it a? Okay, thank you. Did you find it? Did you find an answer? Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. And your application is approved as presented. Thank you. And I just want to say sh thank you to Shana. Um, I think she's been working on this project about the time the design guidelines were adopted. So uh, she was kind of waiting in the wings and made a, a very good effort to uh, meet all the design guidelines. Thank you. Thank Great. you, Shana. Application 21 145 209 North Bowie. Anna? Application 21 145 at 209 North Bowie is the uh, residential one zone and it's a high rated property. And the applicant is proposing a new garage with three bays facing Schubert Street. The new structure will have a footprint of 1,453 square foot and will use board and batten for siding, metal roof, and garage barn style doors. Colors will met, match the main house and the structure will measure 18 feet at the ridge. Um, also, planning to rehab the small outbuilding and add a small rear addition. Item A, the area in question was once the location of a separate home. The HRB previously approved the demolition of the house and the two lots were replatted back into one. It is now a more traditional 100 by 200 lot. The proposed garage is in the approximate location of the previous house. The design guidelines and standards require that accessory buildings not be larger than 50% of the primary building's square footage or 800 square feet, whichever is greater. The main house has a 2,300 uh, 2, square foot footprint, including a recent addition. The proposed garage measures 28 by 51 and is approximately 1,453 square feet. It would need to be no larger than 1,150 1, square feet. The small L building will be rehabbed and the proposed addition will not be readily visible from the street and will make the space more usable and extend the life of the structure. Staff recommends approval based on the design guidelines. And actually, the applicant provided some updated information dealing with my calculations on the square footage. So, one more second. Is there a Todd can explain those? Uh, 
fair representative for the property. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm Todd Stevens. I'm the owner of 209 North Bowie. I'm also going to be the contractor uh, with Bills of Texas Homes. What Anna is referring to is when she asked me for the footprint of the main house. To me, that means what's touching the ground. So the first floor is 2300. The second floor is also 2300. So my main house actually has a footprint according to what she meant of 4600 square feet, not 2300. So therefore, the size of the barn that we're proposing is less than half by a lot. Uh, so what we're proposing is we basically we've got we removed a an old 1940s rundown house about seven years ago. We replatted both lots to one lot to the 100 by 200. We've had a sand volleyball court in the backyard um, since my daughter was in middle school. She's now in college playing beach volleyball, so we don't need it anymore. Um, and it's just growing weeds and it's more of a maintenance issue. So what we would like to do is put in a garage that we can use as a garage, as a pavilion for when we have family reunions at Christmas. Uh, we have a large family that comes for Christmas and during the summer. And although our house is large, it's an old 1887 house. It's very cut up, no open spaces. And so that's kind of what we're proposing to do. And we do want to rehab the old 1940s barn that's the wood's rotten and it's just time to update that as well. Okay. Thank you. Questions for members? Anybody? Anna, can you confirm that Todd's, Todd's correct on? Yeah, so this comes up in the next application as well. Sorry, there's some. We use accessory dwelling unit and we use accessory structure. Okay, so on the lot coverage section 3.41. Um, G is to speaking specifically to accessory dwelling units. This is an accessory structure, like a garage. So that's section H, and it says all accessory buildings except an ADU um, shall not exceed 800 square feet or 50% of the primary building's square footage. So an ADU is by footprint, and all other accessories are by square footage. So I did mix those up in the recommendation, um, and I, I cited his footprint of the main house instead of the square footage. So his, assuming then the, uh, the house is 4,300 square foot, then what he's proposing was below that requirement. Thank you, Anna. Is that clear, clear to everybody? everybody? Do you agree with that, Todd? I do. Okay, good. Okay. Any questions? Any recommendations? Go ahead, Richard. More question. Is it below with the addition of the historic structure? He's he's going to incorporate the historic building that's on the east side of the lot. What's the total square footage, Todd, with the historic building? Uh, it's listed on the site plan. It's five twenty. So they're not going to be they're not they're only going to be attached with a covered walkway. So the existing structure will have a storage new room behind it to lengthen it and you have the, the site plan it shows the square footage is on it right there i'm working with you i just don't want to try to get over i don't want to get over i know uh so the existing barn and the new storage has 529 square foot and it's exactly half so half of that is is the existing so about 260. I've got a question for the board. So when we updated our, our terminology, my thought was that the intent um, of our update of minimizing the auxiliary or ancillary buildings was to protect the integrity of the main structure. And for some reason, we have two different terminologies here in section 3.4.1G and, and H. I remember putting the, the footprint specifically in G. I don't know if we intended to put that in H or not. Um, I'd just like to hear some other thoughts on the reason why we tried to limit the size of new buildings and the purpose of that. Correct me if I'm wrong, this doesn't fall within that limitation. What he's doing, you think it's, it's bigger than well, it, what we intended? 
obviously in G, we're talking about accessory accessory dwelling units, and it's very clear that that in in Section G that cannot exceed the original structure of the footprint, and in Section H, it, we didn't put footprint; we put total square footage, building square footage, which mm -hmm. in his case the applicant is including first and second story square footage in that calculation. I think in this application that applies. I think we also have to consider this was a separate lot and could be reclassified as a separate lot at some point if we want to. That. And that was, was the alternative as we was did there a consider. Reason you put it into one? Say again? Was there a reason you put it into one other than getting the property taxes down? We did it because we wanted to put it back to a town lot like it's supposed to be in Fredericksburg. We bought we bought the property with the intent of replatting it. Now with our change of plans with we don't need it anymore, we had contemplated redividing it and selling it, but we don't want a three or four thousand square foot house directly behind our house. So we're trying to keep the integrity of the hundred by two hundred and make it usable for us. I mean, I mean from my viewpoint, we put that we put these limitations in to keep Protecting the integrity of the original structures and not allow make mansions in the historic district. So there's just a definition change between section G and section H, which has a big implication not only for this application but for the future as well. And I'm just asking the board the thoughts there. You know. Well, yeah, to your point, I think that footprint is the better language applied for both, but in this instance, it's not. Our standards are written as they are. No one really wants to see big, huge garages, uh, at least on the board. Uh, but I think under the current standards and guidelines, it is a square foot calculation, and that's what we're going to have to apply tonight. Well, if you look at slide 127, you can see the scale of it compared to the house. It's not a huge garage. It's no different, really, than the size of the house that was there before that we removed. The house before was a 12 the 1400 square foot house that was removed. And if you can slide over and see the house, and that's our house, and that's the garage. So we've got a full two story house. So it's not an enormous garage that's going to overpower the house at all. And it's 65 plus feet away from the house. And what's it's downhill the of the house as well. What's the difference in the ridge heights? I think the ridge height on our Two story house is like 25 and a half feet, and this one's 18. But the backyard is about three and a half feet There's lower. There's a grade as well. change also. Say again? There's a grade change also. Correct. So this this is about this is to scale where the ridge line of the garage is going to hit about midway up the second floor level. So we're only hitting about 12 or 13 feet, maybe 14 feet on the main house. Other questions? If there are no other questions or comments, I'll entertain a motion. We have one more question. Sure. Uh, sure. The materials you're going to use to rehab the existing historic barn, what, what is that? Tell me about that process. So it's already an existing board and batten from the 1940s. So it's currently got rotted wood, rotted battens. Uh, we are going to replace it. If you can look at the, and if you can go back to the front of the house, the remodel that we just did a year and a half ago, it was approved. We're going to do the same batten where we have the, the wood battens like the older house. So it'll look just like that remodel on the far right of that picture. So it'll be replacing existing batting with new batting. And it's not going to be hardy batting. It'll be the architectural sculpted Adding like what is what is there, and the roof we we want to replace the roof to match the roof of the house, the red standing seam roof. Okay. Based on that, I, I move that we approve application twenty one one forty five as submitted. A second. A second, Tim. Larry, thank you. Any other discussion? Yeah, I just one last. Okay. Right. Sure. Richard, go first, and then David. Um. Just to lessen the impact on the neighborhood, Todd, were you proposing corrugated galvalue as an option versus only, the rich? Only on the existing building because that's what's there. If you look at the picture of the old building, it's rotted, rusted, 
corrugated. And since they're not going to touch, we could, we would prefer to do it all red. So it looks like the same unit because that's always been kind of the stepchild of the, <laughs> of the property. Cause it doesn't even look like it belongs to our house. Right. So we would like to make it all red so that it all matches in integrity and, and looks like it's part of the whole complex. David? Yeah, just, just one last comment. Have you considered possibly making the garage like the 300 foot smaller and then adding that square footage to the back of that the garage that you're going to extend anyway? So it won't really serve the purpose that we need um, because of the square footage we want for the footprint. Because with it being a garage, we currently have five cars and we're about to get a sixth one. And we're trying, part of the reason we're doing this is we're trying to keep our cars off of the street. But having two kids and I have a work truck and a trailer, we just don't want anything on the streets. We're trying to keep our street clean. So by removing 300 square feet, we don't really, we lose the, the footprint. No, I'm just thinking that, because you got obviously some good storage area around where you're going to park your car. So I'm just, well, that's actually going to be where we might store a trailer or store something that's not pulled out every day. So that's why they're on, it's only a half feet each side. So it's just big enough to get a, a car that doesn't move every day in there. And if I lose 300 square feet, then it doesn't really do what we need. Anna, did you have an opinion on the galvanized on the existing building versus the red? Um, I mean, keeping it the same would be fine, or I think matching the red, if he wants to do that, I would be okay with that as well. You don't have a problem going to galvanize versus the historic material on that building? Because the main house was allowed to be demolished, um, I, I think it's okay. Since it's already been, it's, it's lost its context since the house it was associated with is gone. Okay. We have a motion and a second, it's an, and it's a motion to approve the application as presented. Am I correct? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. It's approved. Okay. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. Okay. The next application is one oh application 21-139-109 North Milam. Anna? Mike Pinnock is recusing himself because he's related to the applicant. Application 21-139 at 109 North Milam. Um, the it's a low rated property and the applicant is requesting demolition of the garage that's already taken place. Um, I've cited the demolition section for low rated properties. And the, the, so the demolition has already occurred and staff was not able to evaluate the structure before it was demolished. The structure first appeared in the 1938 Sanborn maps and Google Street View images of the site are not very clear. The houses on 109 North Main uh, Milam are low rated and since the garage was built later than the main houses, it is assumed to also have been low rated. Given the low rating and the condition of the structure described by the applicant, staff recommends approval. Okay. Is there a representative from the property? You want to do both applications at one or do you take them separate? Okay. No, you have to take action on this one because we have a stop work okay. order. This is just for the demolition of the house. Okay, so please introduce evening. yourselves. Hi, my name is Marcus Strading. This is my wife, Catherine. Hi. Welcome. Okay. So the, we're talking about, we're you're asking us to approve demolition of a building that you've already demolished without talking to us about it. Am yes, I correct? That's okay. correct. Do you guys have any questions for them? Okay. In that case, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve application 21-139 as submitted. Second? I'll second it. Thank you, Perry. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay. 
So the motion to, demo, to demolish the outbuilding is approved. Okay. Thank you. Application 21-131-106 North Milam. Anna, this is for change porch columns and add new porch. Twenty one dash one thirty one at one oh nine North Milam, low rated property, and the applicant is requesting to add a new porch to the entrance of Austin Street unit and replace the metal mid century porch columns with a six by six rough hewn unpainted wood post, repaint, replace front doors, replace light fixtures on porches. So I've cited the sections three point two alterations to historic structures. Since it's a low rated, these are all recommendations. Uh, the house was given a low rating in the 2002 survey. The two structures are present on the Sanborn map as early as 1910, and the rear addition on 109 North Milan, North Milam is not historic. The proposed, proposed porch on the rear of 109 North Milam is in keeping with the design of the property, and this addition is not considered historic, so staff recommend, recommends approval. The existing metal porch posts are not original. Based on the age of the house, a simple wood post with chamfered, chamfered at the top and bottom would be more appropriate. If there are ghost marks from the original or previous post, the size should be matched. This is in keeping with 3.25 A and B. And cream or off-white is a common color for the time period. Um, black has been previously approved, and the windows in the front are not original. Item D, the current doors are not original. However, the proposed craftsman style door is not a style not style or period appropriate. Staff recommends a door without the dental shelf. If a replacement is approved, it should match the original style of the house. Um, item E, the proposed light fixtures are more period appropriate than the ones currently installed and staff recommends approval. Are there color samples in our packet? Yeah, they're, they're on the screen right now. They're on the bottom, but okay. kind of doesn't show on. Cream on white doesn't show very well. <laughs> okay. Okay. Would you like to address Anna's concerns, please? Uh, which concern would you like me to, to start with? That would, I mean, is it the Take columns, them. Anna, that you all are concerned about mostly? Yeah, let's start with the columns. I'm going to let my wife do that. Oh, okay. Yes, we just want to replace the metal columns that are, if you can see in the picture there, mm -hmm. just with a... Um, Wooden post. Just the six by six post. Is yeah. Wooden post. So if you guys have something else, I we would be happy to entertain that if we can understand. I'm where I don't fully understand what a chamfered post looks like. So. It, it goes in a little bit at the top and the bottom. It was just a common way of installing posts from this time period. So just a, it's a square post and it's got the edges on top. Oh, okay. It's probably the, the post that you're you're looking at now, but it would require just a bit of a, a yeah. like so taking a 45 on the edges. Is that what you're yeah, just on the edges. Okay. Sounds very flexible. That, that would work. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Only a four by. Yeah. I would think four by four is also still. Is that acceptable? Four by four rather than a six by six porch post. Yeah, that's yeah. okay. Okay. And then item D, the doors, proposed doors are craftsman style. Not and appropriate. There, there should actually be another photo just for taking that detail off. Um, you have that in? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Is that an acceptable door? Is, is that acceptable, Anna? It, it's better. It doesn't look as craftsman. Is that acceptable, board? Okay. That was built in 1910? Yes, or earlier. Actually, the survey says 1890. But it shows the earliest that it shows up on Sanborn is 1910. Wouldn't this type door be 20s or 30s? Probably 30s. Or craftsman. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, you have a recommendation, Anna? I mean, something more period appropriate would obviously be ideal. Um, I know people usually like the lights on top and um, it may have been a solid door. So based on other houses of the same, same period, maybe you could find an alternative. Maybe a two over two. Yeah. 
to a have a picture of this type of a door? How is one supposed to go about knowing what to? We didn't know what else to yeah. propose besides this. Just is there one in the standards? Is that one? I mean, that they could look up later. I don't mean look it up right now, but or maybe Anna, you could give them a couple of page appropriate. Like to honor the 1910 uh, building era of the clubs. What are the interior doors? Are they original? They are. They're, oh, actually, maybe, I don't. I say that I don't know. Left. Are they four panel or five panel? I'm not sure. I'm not even sure. Are they standing up vertical or are they laying down sideways? They're standing. No, they're standing up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> four panel. Probably four panel. Yeah. Okay. Just based on the eight periods, I recommend a four panel with glass in the top two panels. The cost will be the same. Yeah. It'll be any incremental cost, but just a little bit. That makes sense, what they're saying. So just two, two windows instead of the six? Two over two. You've got three over three. And y'all oh, are saying two okay. over two would work? Right, but the top would be longer. They would go down to the check room. So it's a four panel. What he's talking about is a four panel door with windows in the top two panels. Oh. To let light in, which is probably what you guys want. You guys can just get some picture of that so we can I we defer exactly the back to talking about yeah. that consideration. Staff approval. Something like this. I can't. <laughs> I just literally scribbled. We'll just, y'all just. Anna can send you some. Anna can, like yeah, Anna can send you okay. some examples, and if you're agreeable with that, then you can, she can just approve it. You don't have to come back to us. Okay. Okay. So you guys, you're going to add a porch on the Austin, on the Austin side as well. We'd like to add a porch to, you know, reflect this yeah. side, Milam side. Is there enough setback to do that? That's CBD zoning, so technically they can go to the property line. Okay. Do you have a motion? Richard? Did you make a motion? No. He didn't. No. Nope. I make a motion to approve application 21 131. Using four by four chamfered posts to replace the metal posts and a door period appropriate as approved by uh, Anna to submit to her. We didn't talk about the light fixtures. Yeah, and the remainder approved as submitted. The remainder approved as submitted. As submitted. Okay. Can I get a second to that motion? I'll second. Okay. Any discussion about the motion? I'm not seeing where the concrete porch is being put on. Is it on the Austin Street side? It's on the Austin, Austin Street, Street side. side. That it there? Do you have a photo of the we don't have a floor plan with that, do we? Okay, the, it's, uh, can't, it's, I think it's page I think the porch changed it significantly. Say it again. I think the addition of the porch changes the house significantly. It's a low rating. It's, I've been by, it's, and this, anything would help. Yeah, this portion of it was added on and it's, yeah, it's definitely, it, anything it's help. Okay. that's what we're trying to it's do. It's going to look a lot better. A lot better. Yeah. And we're trying to stay in keeping with the way that the porches on the other two units look with this porch, but it's cohesive. Given the rating, you could demolish it. Yeah. You're probably misrated because of the aspects of females. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. There's no other di discussion. Call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. 
Okay. Approved with the changes. So the post tampered and then the door, door is approved by Anna. The door needs to go back through Anna. And, and then what about the light fixtures that we have on here? Are we all okay with that? They're approved. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Application 21-143 for 413 West Creek. This is a big project. We're going to take it in three stages. So, Anna, you want to take the first one? Application 21-143 for 413 West Creek. This is that we're getting, we've got application A, B, and C. We're going to take it in three parts. So, Anna, will you address application A, please? You ready? We're one, ready. I think it's 148. Is it? Uh, yeah. Page 176 of your packet. All right. Application 21-148-A at 413 West Creek in an R1 zone property. It's a high rated structure. It's also a recorded Texas historical landmark. The applicant is requesting a certificate of appropriateness um, to make some significant repairs and um, rehab the, it needs a significant amount of repairs, okay. A, the first floor north facing porch floor requires complete replacement due to deterioration, and the west wing facing porch will require complete replacement also due to significant deterioration. East facing first floor fog work wall is shifting outward, and its base will require significant structural repairs. The building will be leveled, foundations will be shored, and interior floors and walls will be reinforced and covered with wood siding to match the rest of the house. Exterior siding, of which there are at least three different types, will be removed along with the poly that was added in 1989. Walls will be reinforced, new insulation installed, and exterior sheathing and proper air barrier installed. At this time, it is believed that the oldest and most likely original woodlap siding exists on the north side of the building. The intent will be to salvage and repair as much of the siding as possible and supplement it with enough new mat new match wood siding in order to cover the entire building, including the area that is currently reads as fog work. Siding on the small building immediately behind the main house is board and batten type, and the intent will be to repair and repaint this siding. Item E, since no original exterior wood trim remains and the condition of the existing trim is in poor condition, the intent will be to replace all exterior wood trim with new wood trim of the size and detail to match the original. Item F, the first floor window sashes may be original to the building and the additions to it, to it in the 1880s. They are in poor condition and this coupled with the fact that nothing else remains of the original windows, including the frames and sills, prompts the intent to replace these windows with new Marvin fiberglass clad windows, wood windows, which match the original windows in size, configuration, profile, and depth. These windows would be trimmed with wood trim to match the original, and new operable shutters would be added. Item G, second floor window sashes are in fair condition. They still require a considerable amount of repair to make them fully serviceable. So the replacement would also be the Marvin fiberglass. Item H, existing exterior doors at the north and west porches will be restored. Item I, while there have been variation of exterior covers on these doors, including various screen doors, and in the case of the double north facing doors in early period of the building shutters, it is an intent to renovate of this to remove all the current screen doors. Item J, one door at the second floor porch will be restored and two doors which are not period for the building will be replaced with two new four panel wood doors to match other historic four panel wood doors. Item K, the intent of for the north and west facing porches will be to restore these to the original condition, complete with wood flooring, turned in square po porch post, porch railings, trim, built-in gutters, and metal roof fin uh, fenestrations. Item L, the one exception to this will be to remove this, the steps at the north porch, front porch, that were added back in the 1989 renovation to the second floor interior stair and the original door to the interior second floor. Item M, the existing wood shingle roof will be replaced with a new Endura shake shingle roof. Item N, the brick chimneys on the west side of the building will be repaired and recapped. Item O, the second floor porch roof and the roof over the one story stone building behind the main house will be standing steam. And the east facing porch will be wood shingled to match the main upper roof. 
Item P, the rear building with a basement behind the main building. The intent is to enclose this back, the south one story porch at this area uh, in between the main house and this, this building. It'll be contained with um, contemporary aluminum windows and doors. Item Q, the one story porch at the southeast corner of the building, which was added in the 18, 1989 re re renovation will be restored to new condition with the exception of the wood porch floor, which will be replaced with tile covered concrete porch. Item R, the brick chimney in the northeast corner of the building, which is not in view from the street, will be removed to make clear for a new fireplace with a plaster chimney. Item S, the exterior stair under the southeast porch that leads to the interior stair, interior second floor stair will be removed. Item T, windows flanking the new fireplace, chim fireplace chimney will be converted to doors and the east facing wall of the northeast porch will be opened up for a large contemporary aluminum window giving a view of a new outdoor living area. Item U, the small wood frame building with a stone basement will be restored to its original condition with the exception of replacing the south facing windows with a large fixed contemporary aluminum window and the replacing of the east facing window with matching doors with steps leading out to the new outdoor living area. All right, I've cited relevant sections of the design guidelines, including roofs, chimneys, porches, stairs, walls, doors. I think we used all the design guidelines in this one. Uh, windows and parking. Staff recommendation and findings. Felt like I was back in grad school working on a thesis. <laughs> the Keenaman House is still standing thanks to the efforts of the former owner, Paul Hamilton. And the rehabilitation of the house 30 years ago is now in need of substantial work. The degradation of the modern materials speak to the difference in the quality of old growth wood and modern wood. The new owners are taking on a significant house and major rehabilita rehabilitation effort. Based on the historic photos, photos from the 1990 rehab and applicants conversation with Mr. Tribes, who was the contractor on the 1990 rehab, we can assume that very little original material remains, but that great care was given to replicating all features from the roof to the porch, windows and doors, etc. The exception was the work done to the original section of the house. The stone seems to be in, have been stabilized and then covered with faux fog work. Item A, staff recommends approval of the porch floor replacement. Item B, the original stone sections of the house predate the Keenaman family. Great care should be given to the rehabilitation. The Keenamans and Mr. Hamilton both thought it important to show off the original section. Staff recommends the Falkwork section be covered with stucco as it was seen in the historic photo photos when the Keenamans owned the property. Item C, staff concurs with the applicant that the numerous types of siding and replacing with replacing with one profile of the presumed to be original is appropriate. Item D, rehabilitation of all original wood features is appropriate, including siding. Item E, the trim dates from 1990 rehab and can be re replaced in kind to match. Item F, the windows that have original sashes should be retained since they are some of the only original material and are in good enough condition to be rehabbed. This is especially true for the windows on the first floor that are protected by porches. Windows that were previously replaced can be replaced to match the historic profiles. Item G, staff concurs with the applicant and recommends replacement of the non-original windows with clad windows on the second floor. Item H, restoration of the doors is appropriate. Item I, screen doors appear in several of the historic photos. Staff recommends screen doors be retained, repaired, or replaced in kind if beyond repair. Item J, replacing doors that are period appropriate is in keeping with uh, section 3.27F. Item K, restoration of the porches, is in keeping with the design guideline. Item L, the stairs on the front porch are visible in some historic photos. The stairs do not have to extend to the inside and can be blocked off in the interior. However, it is a unique feature to this porch, um, as is the exterior door, and staff recommends they, re they be retained. Item M, the original roof was cedar shingle, and Dura Shake has been approved as an in-kind replacement. Staff recommends approval. Item M, staff recommends approval of the repair of the chimneys. Item O, staff recommends approval of the change to the wood shingle in keeping with the original style look of the house. 
Item P, connecting the back structure to the main house with glass is an appropriate addition if it does not require the removal of historic material. The proposed changes to the southwest wall also require the removal of the entire back wall. Staff can support a glass connector, but not the wholesale removal of the house's rear wall. Item Q, the porch in question shows up on the 1915 Sanborn. Staff recommends the flooring be changed to a composite material that replicates the look of wood instead of a complete change in material and design. Item R, per the design guidelines, chimneys that are not visible from the right-of-way can be removed and new chimneys can be built if not visible from the right-of-way. It is not clear if the new chimney will be visible over the roof line. Staff recommends approval if it's not visible from the right-of-way. Item S, it's unclear the age of the exterior stair. If it was added in the 1990 rehab, rehab, then staff recommends approval of its removal. Approval of its removal. The removal of almost the entire item T, the removal of almost the entire back wall is not appropriate, especially since this is the oldest section of the house. The proposal of the new chimney and extensive glass removes a significant amount of historic fabric. Staff does not recommend approval as submitted. Item U, the proposed removal of the rear and in Rear and inside of the small attached building is inappropriate. Staff could support the conversion of the window to a door of traditional size, not the proposed width that looks to be the width of three doors. Likewise, the proposed addition of glass on the back removes a significant portion of the facade. Um, of note, the Keeneman House is a recorded Texas historic landmark, and the Texas Historical Commission will have an opportunity to provide comments on the changes to the main house. City staff, the THC reviewer and two members of the Historic Review Board and the applicant met on site with the owners to go over the scope of the historic house. Thank you, Anna. Representative for the properties, Randy Stanley. You all know Randy can do a beautiful presentation of a beautiful project, and this is a beautiful project, and we really appreciate the fact that y'all are trying to save this wonderful home. I've asked Randy just to address the, where we have the differences in the uh, in Anna's presentation so that we can address that rather than awesome thank you Sharon thank you Randy. Good evening everybody we got here a lot quicker than I was expecting so <laughs> Us you, too. You, you guys have got a lot of practice so <laughs> you did great um, thank you um, glad to be here I also have Brandon Weinheimer with me here who is going to help us in our discussion of the new buildings. And we also have uh, Wes and Tammy Pack here who are owners of the property. And I'll certainly welcome them to come up and, and be in, in, uh, involved in our conversation as well. So uh, I, I tried to make a note of those items on Anna's list. Uh, you, you did great. We didn't run out of the alphabet. So <laughs> did you do that the first time? <laughs> No, Anna does a great job. Thank you very much. So if, uh, as Sharon said, I'm going to go ahead and try to hit on those items that I think staff had some uh, concern about. If I missed one, please just tell me to go backwards. And if you all want me to go through all of them and then come back, we can do that. I'm going to suggest maybe we just take them one at a time and yes. discuss them and okay. have questions if that's okay with you. That'd be great. Uh, I'm going to start with item B. I, I, I don't think there's an issue there, but I just wanted to clarify in our uh, application we submitted uh, the request to go ahead and cover the entire exterior of the house with uh, with what we feel is the most, uh, the oldest uh, of the wood sidings. There's there's three and there's, there's actually a fourth, but the fourth one is fairly contemporary and it's really bad. Uh, so I'm gonna say that there's three old wood sidings on the house, but our intent is to identify, which I believe, I believe the oldest one is the one that faces uh, faces towards the front of the house, and that's the one that we would propose to reuse. I wanted to point out, though, that uh, we did have a representative from the Texas Historic Commission invited here by Anna for a tour of the property. I really appreciate that. That was very helpful. And uh, during that site visit, it was discussed, and I think we all agreed that uh, even you can see in the historic photographs that at the first floor level where the, uh, uh, the first floor level porch area all of our historic photos show uh, show that that was uh, that was plaster there, stucco, not fog war, but it was actually stucco. So we've revisited that as a design design team and owner team, and we're we're actually on board with going back and leaving that as uh, stucco. But it would be our intent intent that the remainder of the exterior of the building uh, be covered with wood siding. So if there's a question about that, then I just want to clarify that. 
Uh, let's go on to item F, the discussion about the windows. Um, we've actually been working on this project for a little over a year now. And part of our work has been some pretty extensive um, evaluation and uh, research of what materials, photos we can gain. Uh, we were also really lucky to uh, have, be able to have a really long interview with uh, Kenneth Tribes, who did the last work on this building in 89 and, and 90. Um, and uh, you know Kenneth, he, he's a real stickler for detail. And uh, Kenneth has great stories to share, and he'll, he'll sure be glad to tell you everything he did and also the things he wanted to do but Paul didn't want, wouldn't let him do. Some of those things he wouldn't let him do, we want to make part of this work. So we had a lot of talk about the, the windows and doors on this project. And we have a lot, actually, we're actually lucky that we have a lot of photographs from what, when the work that uh, he did in 89 and 90, we included some of those, just a few of those in your packet. One of the things that uh, he did to begin uh, the project was he removed every window and door in this house. He documented where they went, um, and he did his best to restore them and bring them back into the house. Um, but it's important to note that the only thing that was salvaged from the windows were the sashes. The frames on the first floor and the second floor, the sills, the exterior trim, everything was rotted beyond use. So all of that was uh, had to be discarded, and he rebuilt those. The, the windows on the second floor clearly, in my experience, are not of the period of the 1880s, even late, late 1900s period. They look like more contemporary windows. And I don't think that staff disagrees in their, uh, in their recommendations that those could be replaced. So now we're down to the windows on the first floor. The sashes being the only thing that was retained, they're in fair condition, uh, but would need an extensive amount of work to restore the sashes, and we'd literally be building the frames from scratch and all of the trim. So it seems, although the best, you know, if it was possible that we could have the old windows short would be great, but for consistency, for from top to bottom, serviceability, um, energy efficiency, if you live on that street, you're gonna, you can surely uh, agree there's an awful lot of traffic up and down that street. Sound, uh, mitigating sound from the street, from a, from a livability standpoint, that's why we propose to go ahead and, and uh, replace all the windows so we'd have consistency and get them a window that's not going to need uh, constant repair and painting. So that is why we propose to replace all those win uh, windows on the first floor also. Now, Marvin is a great product. I don't think any of you would necessarily disagree with that. And for most of my career, we've been specifying Marvin metal clad windows. That was their mainstay, but the market has changed and they have a new window called Integrity. If any of you are familiar with those or use them, uh, as an architect, I'm really impressed with those windows. It's a very high quality window. And we actually looked at those and the traditional, what they used to call ultimate uh, Marvin clad windows. And the, um, these integrity windows by far uh, match up the profile, the mutton bars, the sash details and everything much more than even the Marvin clad. So that is why we we're proposing those. And we determined that by uh, documenting, drawing in great detail the existing windows and then comparing and drawing the uh, new integrity windows right next to uh, the existing windows. And they match up uh, very well. So the intent would be that we go in with these new windows, we trim the openings out on the inside and the outside, just as they were originally. We'd go back and put operable shutters on there. I, I, I think we can do that easily enough. Um, so you could get everything back the way it looked originally but the packs would have a, a good serviceable window out of that. And we'd have consistency from, from top to bottom. So are there any questions, comments about that? Or I can keep on the going. the example that's on the screen, it, it has Marvin Elevate fiberglass clad. Sorry, Elevate, excuse me. Not integrity, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. Randy, did you specify the six over six on the, fr on the porch, the front porch? Yes, we did. So there's six over six on the on the on the on the ground floor, 
And then there's four over four on the second floor with the exception of three windows or two over two. One, uh, one faces towards the front of the house and two face towards the back of the house. I can't explain that. They're the same period of the other windows, but uh, our intent would be to match uh, the six over six uh, pattern. Um, it, what's there now, we would match the same light patterns, yes. That would be our intent. So the windows, Randy, that are on the front porch that are still salvageable, those are single ones, are they not? Well, we can't yeah, tell exactly because when Kenneth took those windows out and he put them back in, they're not operable anymore. He just put fixed stops around but them. But you could tell by the... Yes, know. they looked like they were probably single hung. Um, but they're all they're all put in permanent fixed frames now, so there's no parting stops or or anything like that left uh, left there, uh, because Paul's intent was to not open them, so he just you know he wanted to look, but he put them back and made them fixed. Randy, I noticed several of the jam liners on these particular Marvin windows that you're asking to be replaced with are they pretty prominent? The vinyl jam liners that you typically see. I don't think so. And, and the well, here's a good thing about this. If you look at the colors that we're proposing for this, uh, for this building on the exterior, they're going to almost match those jam liners exactly. So I think that would be a very, that would be a good positive. I think those jam liners, yeah, in contemporary windows, you have jam liners, but in this case, I think they're going to almost match the exterior paint color. So I don't think it would be something that would uh, stand out and be an issue. Good question though. I, I can continue on if there's no other, no other questions on that. Um, I'm gonna go to item uh, I. Um, Anna's right, it's a good point that the, the historic photographs that we have obviously show screen doors. We all know that in those days, that was, that was a, something you almost had to have. They didn't have air conditioning, obviously. So it's a very important feature to have. Um, the PAC's intent is to restore the, the original doors. We, as we did note in our uh, application, there's a couple of doors upstairs that I don't think are original doors and they just don't fit with the period of the house. But uh, our intent is otherwise to restore the doors that are there uh, to their original condition. We quite frankly like to show them off and the screen doors just aren't gonna be a, a feature or function that is uh, necessary or, or needed uh, to the packs. Um, and we would just like to show the doors off, quite frankly, and the functions not required. So that's why we did not include uh, the screen doors on, on uh, our application. Questions or comments, guys? Would you be willing just to save those just in case there's a change in the future? Save the screen doors. If you didn't install it now, but just I'm sure that would that would not be a problem. Uh, and sorry. David's David's question about saving historic fabric, we you know we've done that on other uh, prominent buildings. If 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 the if the request is to at least save them, uh, I, I think that would be acceptable. It's just a function, you know, to have these on their front door is just not something that's it's awkward for how they use the house. So it's a matter of. Uh, how they intend to use the house and wanting to show show those off. On the historic photo where they have the front, that one, is that a double screen door? Yes, it is. It? Okay, thank you. Uh, with the board's permission, I'll move on to item L. Um, I'm going to hope that maybe some of you all got a chance to go by and put your eyes on this feature. Um, the term uh, unique is uh, absolutely true. Um, my grandpa, well, let me tell you, my dad probably told me this because my grandpa would probably apply to, he'd probably do the stairs in there, but just because there's something that's done doesn't necessarily maybe mean it was right or good design. Now we have two, we have several historic photographs in, in, the, uh, in the packet. If you could kind of page two of those, and I might even ask Anna to zoom in on one of these, which would be great, great having this up on the screen. But I'm gonna say it's probably, I think it's the third and sixth historic photograph that we've included in the application. 
And I'll direct your attention to the first one. It's the third uh, photo, and it should be the one that, that's it. Thank you, Anna. Now, we don't know the exact dates of these of either of these photos, but it's clearly this is, this is a very old uh, photograph of this house. And what we can see in looking in that um, area is the, um, of course, the, the uh, door on the inside corner. If you don't mind, I'm going to use my pointer. Okay, right in this corner. I'm sorry, you all probably can't see that. Okay, that's not going to work. Okay, so, all right. So you, we can clearly see the window that's there, and you can clearly see there's that door in question that leads to that interior stair, which, by the way, uh, goes in front of two interior windows and, and, and goes up. Actually, it, it crosses both the first floor interior windows going up to the second floor, and it also goes in front of that one uh, window that is immediately to the left of that door when you're standing out on the porch. To get that door and those steps in there, if you've gone over and looked at that, they literally had to cut half of the porch columns away and the railing. It's, very odd. it's a very odd installation. I'm not disputing the fact that it did exist, but it, it's, it's a very odd thing, in my opinion, that it would have been absolutely original to the building. Now, uh, if you could, Anna, could you go to the sixth photograph? It is the photograph um, that has the uh, woman standing out in front is, of the that's house. Ms. Keeneman with the Thank crutch. you. I don't know if you have the ability to do this, Anna, but if there's a way that you could zoom in on that, uh, what appears to be that window there, I'd like to direct your attention to that window for a moment. Now, I don't have a comparative photograph. I wish I did, so I'm going to ask you to take my word on this. But if you would go over to that house today and take that exact angle of that photograph, um, what you would see is the stair, that steps exist now. But you see that shadow line in the bottom uh, right-hand corner of those shutters? That's, I'm going to tell you, that's a shadow line. It is not steps. And it may be difficult to tell at first glance there, but those are not the profile of steps. That is a, pro, that is a shadow line of the gingerbread on that porch up above. The point I'm trying to make here is that if you take that a photograph of exactly that same angle, what you're going to see in that photograph are the stairs. You're not going to see the door that's immediately to the right, but you are gonna see steps leading right through where that shadow line of that uh, down on the bottom left hand, right hand corner of those shutters. So here's my point. I, I think that there is re there's reasonable doubt that those steps were added at one time, that they were not original to the structure. I can't tell you when they were added, but it seems very odd to me that they would build that porch originally and, and, and put those steps and those, that door in there and cut half the railing and half the porch column away in that very awkward situation. The PACs have asked in their application to remove the stair. It's not going to function for any reason on the interior, and I appreciate staff's understanding, and, and they're fine with uh, not having that stair on the interior. But this house is a beautiful home, and there's so much going on architecturally that's so positive from the street view of this house. I do not believe, in my professional opinion, that that awkward stair is a significant enough feature that adds to the historic fabric or the character of this house. And I would, I would, I would make the point that I think it, quite frankly, takes away from it. And I would also, what I'm trying to also say is I think there's reason to believe some, there's some doubt that that stair was not there re originally. So um, that, it's a, it's a matter of not only odd function, odd detail, but it, it's awkward. It is just something we would like to, like to remove. Excuse me. I heard that this was an like an apartment house at one time. Do you have any knowledge? I, I have no knowledge other than I heard that. 
You know, Mike, that's a good point. And, and uh, uh, we were also told, and Kenneth brought this up, that it was also um, a nursing home at one time. Um, I, I'm just wondering at some point, uh, this thing wasn't added for access to that front part of the house, either access or egress out of, out of that. Um, I can't say, Mike, I can't find any documentation to that, but it just does not seem anything in my career. I've never seen anything so awkwardly introduced that would have been there originally to the house. I think it's something that a function of the house changed and that, that was added. It was added a long time ago, I'll grant you that, but I, I, I have a hard time believing that when that porch was originally built, that that, that stair was built that way. Is the rock work just one story? The original rock work? Yes, the rock work is one story, and I appreciate Anna's exhibit that she shaded um, in her diagram where the original Fock work uh, house was, was located. And then in the 1880s, um, the addition, first floor addition was made and the second floor was added. And Randy, I can't remember, is the railing and the balusters there currently? For some reason, I can't remember. And those, are they, do they go up with the stairs currently? They do. Um, they don't show up in any of the historic photos sure. we have. Yeah. And you know, quite frankly, I mean, I, we can't see the steps in that, but I'll give you that there, there had to be steps there. Were they, I can't believe they would have put a door there and there's no steps. But in the historic photos we have, we cannot see the railing there. And my point being, that's right. And, and so you're not going to, I don't think, be required to keep those. They're not, they're not historical. Now you got a safety issue with stairs and people climbing on them. And well, I mean, it's going to be a stair to nowhere. If we, if we keep this, there are going to be faux stairs that go to nowhere. Um, I mean, the original, the oldest photo we have doesn't even have the handrail. So uh, that's our request. It, it's before your board to make comment and obviously make a decision on that. But that's our reasoning for, for our application. I know very little about it <clears throat> other than the last Mrs. Keenum. I'm not, not that one. Not that one. But whose husband ran, they had a lumber yard and a hardware store, a lot much like the Stein family. Yes. And uh, it was located on that. And Mrs. Keeneman lived in a house on Main Street, right behind where I grew up. And I find it hard to believe, as you do, that the Keenemans would have chopped something up like that. It doesn't look like someone who was in the lumber business and took pride in, they went to a lot of effort to cover that house with all this fine woodworking. And it just, it just doesn't make sense of why they would put something in so awkward. It doesn't fit. Uh, I don't think it did there and I, then, and I don't think it fits now. So, okay. thank you, Mike. Uh, I'll move on to item uh, P. Um, Anna, could could you bring up the floor plan of, in our application? So let me start by saying that, you know, over the last year, um, We've entertained a lot of options on this property. Well, I want to tell you, there's been everything from adding a, a major addition to this house to um, where we landed today. And where we landed today was a, where we felt was a good direction for this house and for this property. And generally that was to do the best we could in trying to uh, avoid putting a large addition to this house and trying to keep the overall massing of the house as close to the original structure as possible. I know this board over the years, especially over the more recent years, has uh, looked at and um, had to consider a lot of additions to these old homes, some of them really large. And that's not a matter of discussion tonight, I understand, but. I, I personally do believe that wherever possible, 
that if we can try to maintain the, the massing and building envelope of these old houses as best we can, I would prefer to do that. And it's a direction that the PACs decided to take. But what that, what that required them to do was to make their lives fit within the space and the spaces of this house and the form and shape and the envelope of it. We all know that the way people live, the way we live today is a lot different than people did when this house was first built. One of, the, one of those aspects of that is uh, space and sizes of spaces and functions of spaces. Kitchens used to be outside these old buildings. Kitchens are now made now the, a main feature of homes. In this plan, the, uh, a main feature of this house, just like most homes, is going to be the kitchen and the living area. Most living areas and kitchens in most modern, very upper scale custom homes, I will tell you, are a lot larger than these spaces. The PACs are, are of intent is to make this a family home and live in it, but to live in it, there has to be some compromises or some things that we have to do to try to gain some much needed space to make the interior of the house work. Not only the interior of the house, but how the interior feels with the exterior. Now there's, there's been much discussion and I appreciate staff's comments about the amount of wall on the first floor not the second floor, but walls on the first floor that are not facing the street, that are facing the interior of the property, but are in facing the outdoor living spaces of this house. To be clear, with exception of the request of, we just spoke about with the uh, stair on the front porch and the windows, uh, the screen doors, the PAC's intention is to do an extraordinary amount of work to bring all of the all of the character of this house on the that faces the street back to its original condition. Uh, th this project is going to take a lot of work. It's going to be much more involved than what um, Kenneth did back in '89. They're ready for that, but to make this house work for them, we have to find a way to open up and create these living spaces for them and create that connectivity between the interior of the house and the out, outdoor spaces. In architecture, we all know the importance of how outdoor spaces make interior spaces feel better and function. That's what this opening, opening this up in this glass is about, but we've been careful not to do it on the, on the sides of the building that are facing the street. So to begin with, if we could look at the floor plan for just a minute, you could page to that. I appreciate that, Anna. And I'd like to just kind of zoom in on that back part of the house there. So let's start with the, with the kitchen area. And you know that that area between the back, between the main house and the little building in the back. Uh, those porches are, we're not, we're not proposing that, that those porches back there, um, be removed, we actually wanna work with those. But what we wanna do is try to grab some of that space, grab that space between the back of the house, that space underneath the porch and between uh, the, the building in the back and try to bring that to the interior of the house and bring it into the kitchen area. By just allowing us to uh, push that wall back, it allows us to get those refrigerator, freezer, those, those features of the kitchen outside the footprint of the existing kitchen back there. Just that two feet make an awful lot of difference in giving us the usability of that space right there. Um, that sitting room area, we're removing several interior walls there if they're non-historic, um, but then being able to get that openness to the exterior and the outdoor living area and make that area feel larger than it really is. Uh, yes, we're asking to try to open up that wall facing the east, and then by removing that wall that is on the, uh, on the south side there, uh, up to the back building, allows us to bring that, that whole space between the little back building and the main house all into the same livable area. To do this, yes, we need to enclose the back porch, 
The proposal is to do that with glass walls. Now, when we met with representative, uh, the representative from THC, her recommendation was, and I think the PACs are open to the idea of pulling that glass inward away from the porch columns to leave the porch columns alone and set the glass in. That wouldn't be our preference, but if, it, if it's a question of, of being able to do, get this in closed space, which is, it's a necessity. We have to have that space, then the PACs are willing to make that compromise and move that in. That detail would happen on the southwest corner of that back porch and on the southeast corner. So there's porch columns at both those locations. In our application, we propose to replace those two columns with square columns, allowing us to run the glass in between the columns. It's a matter of just detailing that. But if it's a matter of getting this approved and allowing them to get that space there, the PACs are willing to allow to make that compromise and pull that glass in and hence per, uh, protect that detail of the outside of that uh, porch area. Going from the kitchen area and moving back around to the area where um, we request the removal of the, um, of the chimney and adding the new fireplace and, and the doors. Um, it's kind of the same situation, that trying to open the, um, uh, the living area more up uh, to the outdoor spaces back there. Currently, where we're showing that door in the south um, east corner, there's an existing window there. Yes, we're asking to change that to a set of French doors. Those doors, our, our intent would be more in keeping with the style of the, of, of the house, not so contemporary. I'm flanking another set of those on the other side uh, of the fireplace uh, there. So yes. It would require a removal uh, of most of that wall. Uh, the wall we, we would be removing, yes, it would be the stone and fogwork wall, which again, are uh, currently exposed, weren't exposed originally, and we're proposing to cover them up again. So yes, we'd be losing historic fabric, but it would be completely concealed uh, underneath the finishes on the interior and the exterior of the house. So. This whole discussion of these exterior walls, I, I don't, I, I won't, I won't even for a moment say that it's not important, and it's it's a very serious thing to remove historic fabric of that amount uh, to any structure. Uh, but I ask you to consider that th these changes in the back allow this house to be usable for them. It allows them to live in it and make it function for them. Otherwise, it's, it wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be presented that way. Now, um, I'll maybe pause for a moment if you want to discuss that aspect of it, and then we can move on. There's also discussion of replacing some windows and glass on the back building also, which I can move on to that, and we can discuss all of that at one time, or if you all would like to pause and make comment or ask questions about we've, what I've just discussed. Yeah, I'd comment I, just to the board, uh, well, to everyone, but Tracy, my wife, sang at Paul's funeral celebration in the home. And she came home and said, Michael, we've got a house we've got to buy. We've got to, we've got to figure out how to buy it. She says, the only problem is it's completely non-functional. Every room goes nowhere. Every wall is in the wrong place. Uh, it's not a livable house. And uh, I quickly said, there's no, 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 uh, no thank you. Uh, but when I went back to the site visit, one of the things I wanted to confirm was what what really impact do you have if you try to limit saying we can't do anything like this? The portion of the walls that they're removing are all going to be inside. Uh, yes, to the south portion, the portion to the outside that you could see is going to be within a fence that we'll talk about later. But uh, so it's not visible from the street. But I do want to confirm that these changes make a otherwise unlivable house livable. And I think that, and I'm not speaking, there's a lot of things we're going to disagree about, but these particular ones are, we've already confirmed in C and D that you're going to take the, history, the material off the siding anyway. Yes. So much of what we're talking about is going to be interior studs, 
I don't know the I don't recall the interior woodwork, but I recall the walls. But I recall you telling us that you were going to try to repurpose some of them in the area where the two refrigerators were going to be. Is that correct? yes? That's correct. So thank you for bringing that up, Michael. Yes, for that where we're showing that wall actually bump out into the porch area and the refrigerators are. My intent would be to salvage and reuse that siding and trim so that at least from the exterior, you still get the, the feeling of that back wall right there. It, it would just have that offset in it. it, it does, that, does that address the comment you were yeah. asking about, Michael? Yes, that would be our intent. Well, so our intent would be as you're in that porch area, you feel like you're still in the porch area. All the materials and siding that remain in there, even that little wall, that corner that we're showing sa uh, salvaging there, all of that would still be the, the old siding. The glass would die into well, it. it. Well, it wouldn't be the siding. If you're, I mean, you're going to remove the siding. We've already given you yes. to do it. Yes, and we would reinstall it again to give you that sense or feel that, that you were still there at that old, that old porch area. Yes. So my question is, what historic material are you removing by removing that wall? If it's not the exterior siding, there's some two by four studs. It's studs and the interior's modern sheetrock and, and trim. And that's not so, yes, yeah. yeah, so, yes, most of, most of this, I mean, the, the, most of the wall we're removing is uh, wood framing. Um, and quite frankly, that was one of the things that Kenneth told me is when he redid the house in 89, and I've got photos, the, the number of studs in that thing are ridiculously few. And he said he wanted to add more studs to make the house structurally sound. Paul wouldn't let him. So if anything, no, if, of the wood frame walls, that is one thing that from a longevity and, uh, and structural standpoint, we'd want to add more. But in this area, we would be removing contemporary sheetrock, new interior trim, and uh, the siding that we're replacing anyway. And then around the corner, you've got a door, a window, and I believe it's the, that's where the staircase is that we're talking about. Maybe you're requesting to be removed. Is that correct, uh, Mike? Are you asking about the one on the on the back southeast corner? The one would face the uh, pool. Yes, that's it. Thank you. That uh, and that was a question I think or comment that staff had of asking whether or not that stair was original. I can tell you from uh, the photos that. Um, that at least that we had from Kenneth in 89, there was a there was a pretty big, ugly addition off the back, back inside corner of this house that was all removed. And uh, the stair that is there now, he rebuilt. That's a new stair that he built there. Now, the stair that's in the house in that back corner, he said existed. And there was a stair that ran from that in line with that stair that ran out towards uh, it traversed the length or depth of the porch going towards the south, if you can follow that. So my, my point I'm trying to make is the stair that is there now was did not exist there in 89 when Kenneth did his work. There was a very rustic stair that just came out of the building from that, that standpoint. But again, to keep that stair there that exists, to keep that little step coming out of it, it renders the interior a major part of the house to where it's just not functional um, for the packs. So we don't suggest these changes lightly. We're just trying to find a, a balance here between saving this house and getting the house to where it works for the packs, it functions. Okay, so, so just go ahead. a clarity question, because you have there's a lot of red lines on stuff that's going to be removed potentially. So it looks worse. Uh, yeah, the, uh, it does. Yeah. Uh, I know, David I know it looks worse in the, in the picture than in real life. Okay, so it looks like to me there's six walls that you want to remove, starting in one of them in the living room on the south side. So you're removing that wall and you're replacing it with something more aesthetically pleasing, right? Yes. And then on the east side of the sitting room. You're removing that wall, not a, a section space, of that wall. But yeah, but more for aesthetics, right? Because it's you're not increasing any square footage, right? And then the south side of the sitting room, that wall, you you want to take that out to increase the living space. That's correct. Just like the north wall of the addition there, and that you would remove that for incremental space to make it more functional, right? Correct. 
and then those other two walls, that's just aesthetics. No, Knocking they're, out they're, door, they're, they're one to, to a door or blowing out the window to something larger. Right. The, the opening that faces the pool is very functional. They intend to use that space for uh, cooking, for activities around the outdoor living area. So that's a very, it's a very functional thing. Well, and I mean, going from window to a door, absolutely. And, and we uh, do that all the time. But then you've got like three foot panels on each side of the door, which is really not a function. It's more of aesthetic, right? No, I think it's a little bit of both. If you go in that room, it's a very dark space. So trying to open that up and bring a lot of daylighting in there, um, you know, architecture is not just function, but it's it, it's also how you feel in a space. And a lot of this is, it's mechanically, yes, you could cook in a kitchen smaller, but to live in these spaces the way the packs wish to live require uh, a sense of space, uh, and connectivity between spaces. So it's not just what's happening inside that space, it's the sense of connectivity uh, between spaces. That's what a lot of this is about. It's just, is that connectivity and how you, how you feel in, a, in one space compared to the other. So I would, I would say that it's more, it is function. It is not just aesthetics. I would say it's aesthetics put in part, but not entirely. Okay, go ahead. Uh, the State Historical Commission, uh, they, did they say anything about the interior walls? Uh, in? Anna can certainly correct me on that. Do you want to answer that? Uh, my, what I got out of it, the only comments that I heard was that they would like us to pull that glass in on the back porches of the, on the back porches as we just discussed a few minutes ago which I said the PACs are okay with. Um, I don't know, Anne, if there was anything well, else, but I believe that was their, their primary so the, concern. So the THC's not gonna look at the interior because this is not a tax credit project. So they're only gonna look at the exterior, but they've not rendered their, that was just an on-site visit. That was just what she was willing to say. So they, they haven't made their recommendation yet. So we don't know. Um, that's why I reached out to them early, uh, knowing trying to sync up our processes because they have 30 days. They can take up to 90 days. Um, this is a pretty significant. Um, and the, the reviewer that came down is not the Central Texas reviewer. She's filling in because we're going to get our third reviewer since I've been here. Uh, THC has replaced the Central Texas reviewer three times. So the new person is going to be catching up. All that to say, um, I think she's not rendered her opinion yet, and I think it'll run up the chain of command before we get a final recommendation on this from the THC. Well, I was, I was mainly talking about just the interior walls. They have no say over the interior walls. Uh, National Historic Society does because no. his, historic homes, you know, they they have the floor plan with West and Tammy just bought one in Natchez and uh, you can't go in there and remove the hall out of, or hall wall out of uh, Rose Down, Rosalie or any of those houses. And um, I didn't know if that was even a question. So that's to be part of the National Register of Historic Homes, right? Yes. Right? But it doesn't have anything to do with the Texas Historic Commission or the plaque that they have. Um, I don't agree with that statement. The National Register is honorary only unless you're using it as a tax credit project. If it is a historic tax credit project, then yes, they have full purview, interior, exterior, and new construction. Um, this is in our National Register Historic District. It is contributing property to our local and national district, um, and it is a recorded Texas Historic Landmark. Paul Hamilton did that. At the time when he restored it, that's when he did the nomination. Um, so the, the, the THC is not going to look at the interior. They're only going to look at the exterior. The only thing they can do is comment. If they think the changes are so egregious that they could remove the landmark status, but um, they don't have a permit. It's just a comment that they will be giving. But I, I would like to see what their comments are going to be. So while he's talking about removing our actually currently exterior, right? Yeah, I, and uh, we don't have any say. We don't have any say about the interior. I'm right, just curious exterior, about the yeah. historical society, the state, because uh, I agree with Anna's comments. Again, the only comment she made was, again, that they, they make recommendations, and the only comment that she had had to deal with the glass on the back porch. 
And then that was only moving at like two inches. That's correct. And I think Sharon, you were there yeah. when we had that discussion. That's correct. That's the way I understood it. Which again, the PACs are willing to 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 accommodate that if, if we can get it approved. But that's not in Anna's recommendations. So I mean, that wasn't addressed. It is. Right? It, it is not. I, I Anna, you may correct me on that, but we're. We we know that that she had an issue with that, and I think Anna, I think we all agreed that 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 wasn't that was something that they we uh, Tammy and Pack could compromise. Tammy and West could compromise on. When they accepted this house, the Texas Historical Commission, did they do a floor plan of it? I, that, I can't that's say. The packet. This is actually came from the RTHL nomination, the one on page 192, 191. This is the floor plan that was submitted by Paul to the THC when he wrote the nomination. Okay. Then they accepted that floor plan. So, uh, the historical site prints a book on Fredericksburg and showing the interior of that house, the floor plan. It's on a tour. You walk in and uh, Three or four interior walls have been taken down. I agree that they will probably take it off of the historical. Yeah, because I've been in house of those houses and uh, you just don't you just don't move interior walls. I'm sorry. The Especially reviewer the reviewer from Texas Historic Commission didn't even want to go inside the house. She, she she, we, no, we offered her to go inside, and she said she she wasn't interested because they don't have they don't make recommendations on the interior. Larry, I think I understand what you're saying. I mean, from the exterior, this will look like a beautiful Victorian house. Yeah. And you're gonna walk inside, and it's not gonna look like a Victorian house. And you're gonna go through the house and around the back, or see it from the side, see it from Louis Street, and it's gonna look like a hill country modern attached or, or replacing a Victorian house on the back on the first floor. Yeah, I, I understand. I just didn't want to have a problem down the road. If, you know, if it was ever became a tour home or something, their accreditation would, I don't think it would last. I think probably most historic, many historic homes in our historic districts have had interior modifications to make them livable, which I appreciate Michael's comments about. I to, to make that. I'm just saying from a historic state historical. I pre thank you. I, I agree with you, Larry, on that. Yeah. To David's point, though, the current walls that they're talking about being interior walls are currently exterior. Right. And that's what the guidelines cover exterior, exterior walls. walls yeah. Not future exterior walls, but current, current exterior walls. I mean, I'll just throw it out there just one opinion of, of the board. I think knocking out that, blowing out that back wall on the sitting room and then the north wall of that little, of the little addition, I, I wouldn't have a problem with that at all because it, it's, you're going to pick up much needed space, um, you know, for the owners. I guess what kind of throws me off a little bit it, on the, the big glass, they look like with six or nine foot wide, you know, glass uh, doors, they look really cool, but it, it looks like you're tying, from a design standpoint, you're tying the old structure to the new, as opposed to the other way around, um, as opposed to trying to blend in the functionality. I, I think more, that more I appreciate that and more glass, yeah. um, and it makes it look more. As Anna says, "Hill Country Modern." I wouldn't have a problem, you know, maybe doing something a little different, but um, it's just the you're tying the the old to the new, which is kind of backwards. What we usually like to fix. I think that's good comment. I I appreciate the conversation. My understanding was that the intent would be to try to be very distinct between what was historic and what was contemporary. That's why we made these we had the glass look very contemporary so that it was be very clear and distinct between what was original and what was not. That so that was by in, by design. So if if the board it just seems to me a lot of things are approved these days that have that want a strong differentiate between what is historic and what's contemporary. That, that's, we've, that's what we follow here. And, you know, again, looking at the Secretary of Interior standards, that's the way we interpret them, is that where we introduce new structure to try to be as clear as possible that it, it, it wasn't original. But I, I appreciate that comment, David, that, that's true, but it was, it was by, by design. I would agree with you, Randy, it definitely, but on some of these 
kind of blowouts of windows to massive those are you're not adding square footage it's, it's not an addition you're just up that that is right aesthetic. but that that's where i'm that's where i'm going back to how those spaces inside how you feel in those spaces and to go back with a small narrow window when you've got a three hundred four hundred thousand dollar pool outside that you live in and we all can appreciate the architecture being in spaces and, and having outdoor spaces that feel like they're, uh, they blend together and they're contiguous. And that makes the human experience so much different. And that's, that's so much of what we're trying to create here. If you look at this house, it's like so many of these old houses that we all work on, they're, they're, they're a combination of small spaces. People don't live in those small spaces anymore. So this is really, all, a lot of it is a reaction to uh, trying to come to a compromise of maintaining the massing of the building as best we can, but try to get some transparency and additional space where we can to make, to make the space feel to where it's much larger than it actually is. So I agree with that. It, it, that is what we are doing there. Yeah, it almost seems to me that you're gonna have to go wall by wall uh, to really have a ability to the board to consider what are we what are we really doing on each one? You mean one? like a motion wall no, by not, wall? Well, or some description of which walls are. Yeah, maybe. What might help make some other board members comment on the removal of the walls and their opinions, so, so we don't have to go wall by wall. I think the guidelines are pretty specific. Yeah, pretty specific. You want to elaborate on that? In that. And expand on that, please. Well, on changing fenestrations and window patterns. I mean, we're talking 10 times as much glass. I see what you're trying to do, Randy, and I would do it myself if I could get away with it. <laughs> well, I, I agree with that, but I'd also like to remind everyone we all know this is toward, this is not facing the street, it's towards the interior of the property. I'm not saying it's not important, but I think they're. I think we all need to look at the compromise here. Do we, do we, in some, by allowing this, we take a house that is in desperate need of restoration. This house sat on the market for what, nine, 900 days? Okay, no one would touch it because there was so much work that needed to be done to it. And it's not, if you, I guess I'm asking you to maybe look at this and put these walls in context of this huge property. That's a huge lot. And the PACs are asking, their intent is to make this a family home. It's not going to be divided up and we have to be back here looking at more short-term rentals. They want to raise their family in here and their grandchildren. And it's not just this house, it's all the buildings that go with it. Now, I understand that the board's uh, task, and I respect that, and you have a hard job to do, is you have to look at each of these things from an historic standpoint, and your, and your job is to try to maintain and retain as much historic fabric in our community as you can. But I'm asking you to also consider there's, there's got to be some balance. These, are these walls going to stand in the way of a multi-million dollar investment in this property and taking this house and actually doing a total structural uh, re rehab of this building and bringing it back for generations? Or does it set on the market for another 900 days and somebody buys it, they sand down the paint, repay a few rotted boards, and in 10 years, we're back to the same thing again. I've never come to the board with that conversation, and I do it with, with the utmost respect for what you all have to do. Richard is right. If you go by the letter of the law, of the, of the guidelines, yeah, he's right. I guess what we're asking here is, is there is there some level of compromise here to make the space, as Mike said, livable? Because as it is now, there's un, unless you're one of rent it out for a bunch of B&Bs for individual rooms, which by the way, that was the last use of it. Then to make it a livable home, they need to make some accommodations. 
Could yes. someone really come in, make a do a little patchwork to it, and turn it in to what has like Paul had it as a B and D? To me, because Michael and I were there to visit it, it's on its last leg. If we don't do, if somebody doesn't do something soon to save it, it's an asset that we're completely going to lose. But you just said somebody could slap someone it could on and someone could. I've look, seen it. There's any any project you could come in and and do any level of work on it. Obviously, the things that are rotten would need to be replaced. I guess what I'm trying to say is the PACs are invested in this thing to do an extensive, correct renovation of it. Uh, even when um, Kenneth worked on it in 89, he wanted to level it. If you remember, uh, I think, I don't know, Sharon, if you got a chance to walk through the house, uh, there's, there's nowhere near a level floor in that house. The whole even. house needs to be totally level. The east wall of the Fock work is tilting out and falling away. That whole wall is going to have to be replaced and repaired. We intend to do that, to take it apart. And we have a very good local contractor already hired that will take that back and painstakingly rebuild that to its original structural condition. So we're, we're not asking to change that. But there's things like that that come along with that, that the house is I agree. It's it's on its last leg. It needs a lot of work to it. So yeah, and just I mean, I spoke to it making it functional, but that didn't mean all these different changes. I was speaking, and, and Richard, I'd like to hear your opinion on just the south wall there, where the kitchen is proposed. It's in that that wall that connects the two historic buildings, proposed connection. Yes, sir. Because to me, it's sheetrock studs and sidings coming off anyway. It's not historic material. I agree. I'm just going by what the guidelines say. It's an exterior wall right now. Yeah. Well, it's part of it is. Some of the studs are. Sheetrock's not. The siding's not. Is it the same as the rest of the I mean, house? I don't have an issue with the back wall coming out. It's just going to be enclosed. And I think Randy's idea of wrapping the siding. I think the fenestrations on the east wall are probably the big game changer, in my opinion. And then the porch that faces Bowie Street, I guess, double mm -hmm. back porch with the gingerbread and losing that in the corner post, I think is a I like the idea that the commission presented to set the glass. Here. Yeah, we can pull that in. That would that would allow us to leave the turn post, all the gingerbread, all the details. I think that's what she was she was searching for. And again, that that that's a that's a doable compromise. We're willing to do that. So, so what about the big windows on the south end of the old structure you're connecting to, and and then the uh, the, the, the little building in the back south. Well, south or the south side of the. Can you pull that up? Yeah, we're working with you, Randy. <laughs> okay, but um, we also have. I'm we, sorry, and I have a hard time describing the south where we're at too. The, the building has to be building. maintained, though, one way or the other, because we have demolition by neglect. Maybe. It's not. Well, I understand that. Wait, 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 wait. One at a time. Is this the, is this the picture you, go you back want to see? To, yeah, I want to see the original. So that's it. Richard, go ahead with what you were going to say. I just wanted to bring out Randy's point about the building falling down at some point. That's not going to happen because we do have demolition by neglect that the city can enforce. Yeah, I mean, we're not getting to that, but it's not going to fall down. Okay. Michael, did you have a comment? Just, it's in relation to this side. This, of the is the, this is an example, I think, of what the collective board has more of a concern on. Is one, two, three wide windows. There ought to be. I think Anna, you might. You have, did you propose a, a door? Or was that the east side? I can't remember if you said a door would be. Correct. The one I was talking about was the other side. Because okay. um, yeah, again, adding the glass to make more space, I was okay with, but not removal of the walls. So go around to the other side. There, that's. Not that's that's more where Anna's problems are, right? Well, 
on that frame, you've got three areas where you want to have the Yes. Starting on the south, or the window, the door plus. That's right. So the yes, we we took the three we took the faces that were not facing the street and opened them up with a lot of glass. But typically, what the board has allowed in the past is for functionality converting the window to door. Right. Sure. Randy, I have a question. Was there a reason you didn't do the same steel case type windows flanking the fireplace that you're proposing in that sitting area? Or maybe the illustration? I just felt there that going with something that looked more traditional um, with the house would, would be better. Plus our interior designer wanted to have a door there that they could, they could stain and not, and get some some warmth to those doors. We couldn't do that with metal doors. Am I mistaken that those, that the gray and black squares are, that's really not what it's gonna look like. It's gonna look more like it's a transparent. solid glass wall. Yes, it's right? glass. Because so, I've seen these in other homes. Okay. Yes, it it's would not, be transparent in yeah. these SketchUp models, that program we can't, if we, we can make it transparent, but unfortunately, then you look into an empty box and it looks distracting. So in these, in these uh, programs that we use to draw these things, we just leave them gray so it's not distracting. But it would be absolutely cl uh, clear glass. And glass, by the way, on all of the windows, we're happy to work with the board and Anna on the type of glass that, that the board or staff would be, feel would be appropriate for the, for the building. Anna, when you say removal of the almost entire back wall is not appropriate, especially since this is the oldest section of the house, that's this section, not the other side, right? It's there. This is the, the clockworks set your stone section. Okay, so you'll have, then you'll only have three walls remaining of that original stone section. Two. I don't know what, it, if they're going to take it down in the interior, I don't know. Then you'd only have two exterior walls of the original stone. Nothing left to rehab in the future. What is the width of the windows that you will be replacing with the French door? And what is the width of the French door? The width of the windows at there is right about um, three feet, Mike. And if you... the the doors are going to be, uh, all we can get in there is a five-foot door, a pair of French doors. I think a reasonable comparison would be that if you look at those six-panel windows that are there, the width of one of those panels of glass is about, um, about one and a half to two of those would be adding about that much more glass to it. But it's, uh, for the packs, it was a matter of transparency and also the connectivity, being able to open those doors up from the living room and feel like you were in the back in the backyard. A, sing, a single three foot door would be sufficient. It it would maybe be something they they would consider if that would be. Because then it's that, basically taking the same dimension. Working with the same width as the window. Before we go there, Randy, could you? Offer up, talk about the gas fireplace compromise. We talked about. Oh, thank you. Yes, uh, I might. I might offer another option that we've we've discussed. If the, maybe the board is, would be interested in this, uh, if Anna, you could go back to our back image, which you were at a few minutes ago, that showed that back view of the house, and it had the the image of the new model below. Um, I think staff has indicated. Uh, that they are okay with the removal. There is a chimney back there now, which is really an awkward location for any kind of solution of what we want to do. So we've asked that that go away. Um, I, 
you know, in reading staff's recommendations here, I, I do understand what they're try what what the goal is to try to retain as much historic wall back there as possible. Another option that we've discussed, if the board would be amenable to this, is to actually use um, zero clearance fireplace units inside the building envelope, and we could negate the, the, the addition of the new chimney entirely. That way we wouldn't interrupt the wood siding between the, uh, the second floor windows, and we, could, we would not need to remove that section of wall where the fireplace is. It could remain, and we could continue that siding on the first floor continuous through there. So that that, that would be another compromise, I think, that could work for us. It would It would actually end up um, I think removing less wall and we wouldn't have that new chimney on the exterior of the house, which in other words would retain the more of the shows, look of the ex back exterior. The, so the, chimneys, the chimney that's there now would be gone. Yes, right? I'm saying that we could compromise but, and, and, and not do the chimney. We would just merely have a couple of flue pipes that would come out of the roof for the for this, uh, zero clearance fireplaces that we, we could do inside the building. The intent was here that the first floor, the fireplaces were going to be wood burning, a wood burning fireplace on the first floor. I really needed to have the chimney to do that. But the PACs have said that they, if it helps the, in the positive direction of this discussion about the exterior walls and appearance, they'd be willing to do that and not do the exterior fireplace. In other words, we could continue that wood siding on the exterior in that location. So would you be converting? Two windows into two doors. Then, yeah. The, the, the well, actually, there's the, the one window that's on the southeast corner. We're requesting to still be allowed to do change that to a French door. Uh, there is an, uh, a a window uh, west of that, but it almost falls right in the middle. Of, you know, to, to, it falls to the uh, to the west side of where the fireplace is. We'd like to go ahead and remove that and get another French door on the other side of the fireplace. So the, the two French doors would balance the windows on the second Yeah, floor. so what I'm saying is we, we could compromise and it, it, we could, again, when, when it's all said and done, the stone wall and the fog work, I get it, it's sort fabric, but it's all, it's all hidden anyway. So what, we, what we're saying is we could compromise and at least get that chimney out of there and you'd see continuous siding on the first floor and the second floor. Nothing would be there that would would interrupt that. But we would like to still get those French doors to open that up, that during gatherings and parties, they can open those doors up and you're right out onto their, on their pool area. Otherwise they have to walk around through the kitchen, back over through whatever, I guess, openings you all would approve. Randy, would you consider with removing that chimney, matching the steel case windows with the doors on that side, just three foot or six foot? So that it does clearly. So they're not said, they're not double doors, right? Like you like you said, it clearly states that these are new. Oh, you're talking about the style of the door. Yeah. That way, I think there. I think we'd be open to that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the theory, yes, I think that's that's a good point. We are, what you're doing is building on my on my point. I was trying to get right. Yes, and it helps balance. As well yes, I think we. Side. I think that's very doable. Sure. So we don't get this semi-traditional thing going on underneath yeah. with the contemporary. I think they look like they'd be agreeable to that. Yes. Randy, on the fireplace, have y'all considered a wood burning stove? There's some wonderful wood burning oh, stoves. I, 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 that I know, just but I think yeah. I know. I think it's the effect that they're trying to get in that living room. So yeah. On the same same vein while we're going, would you consider on the, the sitting wall area that you want to blow out, instead of doing the big contemporary glass, matching those French doors, put another another set there, and you would have the light, and you would have the accessibility, and it would help maybe a bit more on the aesthetics of. So the you're place. asking for something that's more traditional looking there. Well, matching the two that you're doing. I I think they're probably going to want to gravitate to more of this because it's just really trying to get that transparency and connectivity to the to the pool something like that it just i i think that would probably be a, a preferred no on that and it really wouldn't accomplish what yeah i wouldn't say those walls so it, that 
but what it would accomplish is converting, I mean, we have the precedence to be converting windows into doors, so it would be along with that same precedence. So. Yeah. On that wall, there's no windows. There's a there's one door that exists now that comes out of the kitchen, and it goes to the back porch. So that door is going to we're we're going to we're going to want to remove that and close that because that's where the new stair go is going to be going up. So we actually are we're asking for a new hole in the wall there for a new opening. So it wouldn't be converting an existing opening. I would almost argue with Randy that. The clear contemporary definition over something more traditional clearly defines it as it is. Yeah, rather than trying to add something from another era. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the intent is to try where we're saving things and renovating is to bring it back to its exact original condition as much as we possible can. Yes, some exceptions, windows in the stair to nowhere. But in these locations, it seems logical to me to, to really make it clear that the, the, these were not original features and that that that's our intent i think the french doors are confusing i Say i don't i don't disagree with the french that. doors are what confusing i think we'll go with the steel there three foot wide i think we're okay with that so yes. three foot wide steel there yes so we're good with that so it sounds to me like we're close to forming a motion here richard all right, I got heartburn with pulling the screen doors off of that house because I've driven by that house on my bicycle since I was 12 years old, and that's part of that house. And I think it's part of the historic fabric of it. I'd like to see the screen doors stay. And, and that's, what the, that's what the guidelines would say. What about the back porch on the Bowie Street side? Can you do something to kind of maintain the integrity of that? I'm sorry, could you be more clear on that? Richard, I'm Tammy, not following you. Could, Tammy, come to the microphone and introduce yourself. Whoever's speaking out of the audience, come to the... Wait, 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 Wes, come if you to want to talk, come on up. We're well, we, we'd love to hear you. Come on up. But you got to speak in the microphone. I'm bored up here by myself. Are you talking about the Edison? Wait, 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 come to the mic and introduce sorry, I'm yourself. I'm Wes Pack, and this is my wife, Tammy Pack, for the folks that are taking on this nightmare. <laughs> Unfortunately, I couldn't talk her out of it. <laughs> right, you're right. For like six months. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what is the question about the porches on the side for sure? On the Edison side, the Edison Road. Yeah. It used to be A Street, then Bird Street, now it's Edison. Yeah. It's A and Bird, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Which one? That image that right, right there. there. I think that's an important part of that house, and it's a public street view. Uh, you know, I have to agree with you. The problem is, is just the functionality. I still want to know what you're asking. Are you talking about the where the enclosure is? Right, but Randy has a way to keep that clockwork, I mean the gingerbread on that side by pulling those windows in, correct? Right. Correct. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Are you willing? We're, we're good. Yes. Yeah. We're yeah. We're yeah, in fact, what you see there is the original plan of having the encased windows or doors and windows. The middle in case windows and that framework was going to be put up and you would see that that mill uh uh what do you call those pillars turned. yeah the turned pillars that being the case after anna and everybody came out there we discussed it and said hey, if we can move those in so that corner post now becomes the original freestanding post yeah but then you're also going to have the gingerbread, the gingerbread around it. Richard, right. you're correct in the yeah. application. I took it out. Okay. But what we're saying tonight, we're fine with leaving all that the way it is, restoring it, and pulling the glass in probably about six inches to the interior. So all those details can stay. Yes. And we do the same thing on the other side as well. Okay. I think the only other thing the board has heartburn over is the south window on the Artist studio. That's what? him. That's him. I... <laughs> what are we talking about? Oh, your window. Throw him under the bus. I'm throwing him under the bus. <laughs> which, which one is this? <laughs> you know oh, the uh, other that there. other stop. Right there. It's, it's right that there. one on the back. Okay, the bottom of that window goes right to the counter there. And the reason why I requested to throw that in there was to give it more efficiency for the lighting. Uh, it, if you look at the floor plans of that, you've got 
cabinets all around, a bar prep area, but then it goes out to the pool. Now, during inclement weather, we're going to have people probably in the house, in that area, and it's just going to be a fantastic way to showcase the backyard. That's, that's basically it. But allow some light in there so we don't have to sit there and have the dark room that it is right now, even oh. with all the windows open. On that wall in the afternoons, you're probably going to get more light than you want. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure gonna, it will. Have a cover and we'll, and we'll have some fantastic shades to, to compensate for that. But the, 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 the idea we're doing there is you've got that section of that wall that encloses that porch. Why not try to gather that, take a little bit of that and put it on the back in a subsequent way that allows for light to come through and just kind of give it a little bit of lift. A little bit of, that's all. That used to be the old kitchen, by the way. Yeah, I've been in this one. <laughs> and, I, and I've been collecting armadillos down below in the cellar for the past year or so. Dead armadillos. It's too much. It, uh, the, the gable part of the window bothers me. It doesn't fit anything else in the house. Mm -hmm. And I wish you could narrow it up some. Well, our compromise was just to take what small little windows there and just expand it all the way across, just in a vertical format. Not do it a full gable at the top, take the gable away and just have it a vertical format. In other words, not... Just I'd like it, I would like for you to remove some of that siding and live with that space with an opening there for a while and see what your light is like. Oh, I've stood there. An opening? You know, like a, what, just, well... No, no. There's a window there. Yeah. Oh, the What's the size of that window now? Oh, I see. There's, there's, a, there's a window in that back area. Yeah. Uh, where that sat right there. I it's just a very dark roof. I see people. I, I believe that I, you're going to open it up when you open up the uh, east side. When you open that side up, you're going to you're going to either shutter it or you're going to drape it mm -hmm. eventually. Yeah. And then it's going to defeat the whole purpose of it. I agree. Because you're not going to want to live with that light. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, so I will give up that window to have a full wall of glass on the pool side. Got to compromise something, right? Okay, okay. <laughs> that would make a great art wall, too. <laughs> and, and we could have more cabinets. I mean, so there's arguments to be made. Yeah. You know, if you don't check out the, all the glass and you've got cabinetry. I, I just, my, my big thing is just to get more light in there. Now, you're, you've got a great argument during the certain seasons where the sun it's is going to hit that top gable and but we've got a huge elm tree back there that's always going to give us some good shape. We've got the largest elm trees apparently from you know Hank has been saying, yeah, cedar elms in the entire county. That I was shocked to hear. The one back there, we've got a little do, do a little more nurturing to it. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm on the fence about that, honestly. Anyway, because despite what you may think by seeing this, I am not remotely modern in any aspect, and this house is going to be incredibly yeah. traditional. Yeah. Well, it's it's you from the public right away, so that's what we have to go by. Yeah. So yeah, and, and, yeah. So, and you're good with it, Tammy. I okay. I, I love it. So <laughs> because it is the one thing people can say, "Oh, that looks modern." The existing from, one, probably. yeah, existing I windows. I mean, to me, if we could do the existing one there, if you guys could let us have all the light, a little bit wider, that'd be nice. And then from, that. from out in the corner, all yeah. you see the old windows. I could live with that. Yeah. Because I think it's reasonable compromise to get what everybody needs. Okay. So. Why don't you form that, form that into a motion? Wait, wait, Larry has a comment. Uh, <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the yeah. 216. Uh, that you finished. What? That? No. 216. Two Back up. That's 270. That's a good, I like that. Never mind. That's that one? No. I want the one you had up there before that shows that window that we've been talking about. There we go. There we go. Okay. Uh, the door and the glass going in the, which used to be the breezeway. Yes. I have a problem with that being glass because it's, it's on the side street and you can see it. Of course. I had no problem with the rest of the glass. It, I, it, would, I would like to see a, a wall on the south side. The but they're already going to move it over. And Larry, we, so we were looking. Holes still show. It's not going to be that abrupt. Larry, we proposed several ideas. In fact, one of the ideas, you know, because you're, you're wanting to say not to see that glass. And, but we like, we, the main thing is to make the functionality of the house better, you know, as far as adding that area in there. Uh, 
as Randy's take, Randy's take was, you know, from the executive of the interior, that is the best way to show that something is not just added on, but it's new. And it separates the old from the new extremely well in a way of kind of a nice little contemporary look at it. If we were to close that in, then we're conflicting with whatever type of materials, whatever type of era or design we're looking at. That's our understanding is we're not supposed yeah. to make it look like wood frame. So our only option to capture the space is to separate. This, this is new. That was old. This is old. Yeah. This is the new connector. So we're trying to do that, not to be contemporary, but to be to follow the standards of old and new. <laughs> I mean, is there, your concern with type of glass or the fact that there's glass? No, it's just it's glass. It just, yeah. uh, I have no problem with the uh, approval of your glass. Just that it's fastened it to the screen, yeah. right? Because you have no problem with the glass on the you other side. Would, Larry, do you think it would help you feel better about it, the fact that we would just shift it in and leave all the detail and fenestration from the porch alone, shift it in six inches? And, and if you could give us the understanding that this model, it really does stand yes. out. It's all gray. But in reality, you're going to see light into that space. Yeah. It, it'll be transparent. Okay. I'll, I'll go with that. Make it non reflective. Yes. Yeah, as I said before, I know that there were concerns over the types of glass. You're totally on board with working with staff on an acceptable type of glass for all of us. You know, crazy. So you know, we're not going to go back into an all gray black glass. Yeah. We're, we're, we'll work with staff and, and your board on what's an acceptable type of glass. We're really bringing the glass and you can prove it. And, and one thing Randy may have not mentioned is where you see the old kitchen connecting with that back porch coming out is we're cricketing that. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, that is, is an extreme need because when you're coming down off that house onto that back porch, you're flowing right into that back building. But, but I want you to know it's a very, very shallow cricket. Yeah. You will not see it. It's merely a matter of Drainage. functionality and getting the roof. Drain properly. Right now, it just drains the back uh, into the north side. That's going to be a little easier. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Oh, the roofing. I know you talked about the shingle. What about the roof on that little that little kitchen building? And we'd like to stay with it. Exactly. Stay with what's there. Yeah. Or is it there? Or is it? <coughs> or <coughs> that or we can just add it to our. Or we. Because it may be. We just pan down. Okay. So our intent is to go back with the metal roof, I just, that, but we wanted to go back with the shingles on the old, uh, on the rest of it. And uh, Kenneth said that there were shingles on there when um, when he said he started his work in '89. I asked him if he decked it. He said no, it's all wood and lead. So they went back and they worked with the original lab and put what put what's up there now. Yeah, you get up in the roof of the main house and you can. Up in the attic of the main house, and you can go, Yeah, this is gonna be fun. He said, If you find the shingles that we're gonna use for those of your shape that we put on the vis uptown visitor center and Pope St. Henry's Church, uh, oh, in lieu of the time, maybe I can help Please. here. So, for the this is question for the board items A through K. Wait, what page are you on? I'm on page 184. Okay. So on page 184, items A through K, does anyone have a problem with accepting the application as presented, items A through K, which would include allowing replacing all the windows? Um, In I, Anna said to keep the screen doors, and Randy said they don't want the screen doors. That's what I said. Um, we, I said no, we would no, keep. Well, I said you're going to store them. Yeah. No, we're going to keep them on. Oh, keep them. Oh, okay. 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 Application okay. was to Forgive remove. Me. That just right? came up. Application yeah. was to remove the, the screen we, doors. Yeah. No, not, not okay. They're so important after, to them, and, and we, they're going to come. I'm on the fence. Like, I'm, I was on the fence okay, with so we'll keep that. So let me say A through H, <laughs> and then so okay. as A through H are the art articles as presented by the applicant acceptable. I do have one question for Randy. Were there any evidence of historic screens on this house? I could I can't believe a house of this age wouldn't have screens on it. I know the shutters function, but are we gonna end up with metal screens or are we gonna end up with wooden screens that would have been cover up the metal cover up the new windows and almost give it a historic look? 
Is your question, are we intending to put screens on the windows? No, my first question was, there is, is there any evidence of historic screens? No. Which is very odd. No, and nothing that exists. All we have are right. the historic photos, and what we see in the historic photos are shutters right. and uh, shutters and screen doors on the bottom. That's all we have to go on. And Where they ripped all the windows off. Yes, and our intent is not to go back with screens on the new windows. The intent is to have the windows look like exposed windows with operable shutters, real operable shutters. Kenneth actually used a standard shutter and they lap over each other. My intent is to detail the shutters with operable shutter hardware where they can actually cover the window. With and I think and I can do that. Dogs. Yes. I've already looked at sketch the detail, and I think I know how I can do that. It's not easy okay. when you're using a new window, but I think I can do that. David's working on motion. I'm trying to, I'm trying to help you. So, okay. So, items Thank A you. through H as presented. Does anyone have a problem with them? Yeah, my only other comment is the windows downstairs covered by the porch, original sashes, wavy glass window. Y'all just, y'all are wanting to say we don't want to spend the money to build new jams rehabilitate them. Our, our request would be to allow us to replace those with the same windows we're doing upstairs. That way we have the same, we go back with the same configuration, same size, and we don't have, and they've got good operable, yeah. uh, energy efficient windows top and bottom. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the project. I'm trying to, I want to get there, but I've got a concern with that. This guy wants to free Pacific. This board has been pretty, consistent with requiring wood, wood windows that are not deteriorated. I don't how, how, how much is left is my question, Michael, because I love wavy glass. I like old windows. Yeah. Tomorrow buying an old house. Or we get a, I mean, I love all that feel. But when Randy starts going, this piece of wood right here is what's original. Yeah. But even well, I'm starting to go. Yeah. So you can well, describe the I mean, well, we're, we're, the we're sashes wrong. are original. The, sa the sash is the only thing that's original. On the second floor, again, I, I those are not original to the period. The only thing we've got that we've got to work with are the sashes on the first floor, which need a lot of work. All the rest of the window is gone. There's nothing remaining of it anymore. Yeah. Just speaking from personal experience, living in an old house, and we spent a ton of money restoring the windows, and then we had a hell storm that knocked out 28 of them. Um, and so it, from a standpoint of efficiency and I. I wouldn't have a problem with replacing with with wood windows that simulate the that look like the originals just for energy efficiency and livability as well. My my so, I can say so, if they were eighty percent there, we wouldn't have this conversation. We'd be like hundred percent. Let's do the so so he's introduced wood. another concept that we've done as a board is replacing them with wood windows. That's that what, what you're saying? Talking about. No. These are wood, but they're the, the elevate windows are fiberglass clad. And actually, I, honestly, they look better than the aluminum clad windows. They really do. It's, you, need, you know, look at these windows. They look like finely painted wood windows. You cannot, t it doesn't look like a cladding. They look like painted wood windows. But, but you're literally never going to have to paint them again. Um, it's just a matter of serviceability. The board has, has approved replacement of windows that are beyond deterioration or for improved efficiency. But those windows are typically wooden uh, windows, the same materials. These are wood windows, but they but they are cladded with fiberglass on the exterior. To be clear, these aren't like vinyl, hollow vinyl windows or anything. They're a true wood window. They're cladded on the exterior with fiberglass material that seriously just looks they're like a really good paint job. And and again, we're going with true to we'll go with, with the simulated divided lights. They're not, the, they're not the mutton bars between the glass. I'm doing one next month because I'm leaving the four wood original windows in. So I don't want to, but the way I interpret the guidelines. I have to. Your point's well taken. What, what part of it's original? But those are, those sashes were something that a lot of people around town, there used to be a lot of people around town, fewer now could take and reuse and repurpose with jams. And I think it would be a, a real cr uh, critical architectural feature 
of the restoration and preservation. And I get it. I get the expense, and I, you know, I, I, I'm for projects. I'm not against people. I'm for them. And I want to see preservation, but those downstairs windows with the wavy glass covered by the porch, sash is in good shape. I, I'm, I just couldn't get on board, so you might just have to go one, one more up. Uh, <laughs> a through E. A through E. I just want to get some of the stuff yeah, knocked off. Yeah, A through E. What about A through E? People are having problems with A through E. No. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'll make a recommendation to approve application 21-148A, 413 West Creek Street, items A through E as presented by the applicant. And that's application 21-143. 21-148A. 143A. Yeah, just make sure that we talk about on D that they're going to do the stucco. I don't think that was presented. Yeah. yeah. They're going to do the yes, that, was, that is something that we, we, we brought up tonight. We're good with going back with the stucco on that inside corner on the first floor porch yeah. facing the street. Okay. I'll That's second. not what we presented, but we'll be yes, okay with, with the stucco. That. Yes, with the stucco. Okay. okay. So we have a motion and a second to approve, to approve items A through E, and that's in B, the uh, applicant going along with the stucco. So any other discussion on just A through E? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. Chair, did we get a second? Richard. Oh, Richard, I'm sorry. Okay, now what are you gonna do, David? <laughs> G, G through H. <laughs> okay, so how about yeah? Let me just so um, I will make a motion and of course we got to get a second. So I'll make a, make a motion to approve item application. You said it's 143, 21-148A, 413 West Creek no, Street. 143A. In my book, it's 148. I think there's a discrepancy. The agenda identifies it as 143, but in your packet, the, sh the application sheets have it as 148. But we have know, a 148, one and that's 300 West Main. Right. I don't know which one's we're correct. The same I'm number just, twice. I think that's where the confusion's coming in. It's, it's okay. listed as, as two different numbers. So, um, go ahead. I would like to do it's on the numbering three one forty three. Make note page one seventy six application numbers twenty one dash one forty three. What's in the record? So, so I'll make a motion to approve application twenty one dash one forty three A items F through eight as presented by the applicant. Do I have a second? Which ones again? F through H. F G and H. G and H. Makes sense. So we can give a second. Okay, that motion are you going to second it? You're going with staff recommendations. No, with no. Applicants. 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 It has to get a second that dies. That motion dies for lack of a second. Okay. So can someone else form a motion? So I'll make a motion to for application 21-143A to on items F through I to disapprove the applicant's application and require that the original windows be used in the four locations mentioned and that the screen doors that are historic stay in place. Yeah. May I ask a question? Wait a minute, let's wait. Oh. Are you through with your motion? Yes. Okay, is there a second? Is it, can I ask clarification for the motion? Yes, please. Is it are you on G, Richard? Are you saying what is your this is the second floor windows that were not original? You're, you're, yes. You're saying what? 
It's allowed. Is that per staff recommendation? So the per staff recommendation is just that's what it says. Per staff recommendation. Okay. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? That motion dies for lack of a second. No second. Okay. Okay. So we have a motion and a second, Larry. Now discussion. Did you have something you wanted to say, Randy? About if I'm following some of the discussions or concerns here, would the board entertain the option of of restoring the first floor windows and allowing the applicant to replace the second floor windows with the windows proposed? Would that can that be would that would can that be something that, that can yes. you repeat that? That's what I'm, we did. I'm, that's what me? we did. Item G. No, G I'm sorry. I, I maybe I misunderstood the I I understood the proposal that. You wanted wood windows everywhere, and what we're I'm the asking original. I said the four original, but you said disallow H through I. No, and, and item uh, okay, item I misunderstood. I uh, I think the use of the word disallow was confusing. If you meant to say approve with staff recommendation, because it sounded like everything else was not going to be allowed. Let's just do this easy. Okay. So I guess where I'm going. Okay. I'm asking is the board would the board be open to the, to the concept of requesting that the first floor window, whichever you choose, be renovated to their original replication yes. and allow the applicant to replace the second floor windows, which clearly are not period to the house with the windows that they proposed. Yes. Yeah. That is so, to you. This is what you're saying. It's what so, the applicant is saying that that would be acceptable to them. Okay, that's what he says he said. So, we have a motion and an approval. Well, is that what he, what do you have? Okay, yeah. so H through I. <coughs> F through I. Okay. F through I, first half recommendation. Okay. H, G, H, G, F, G, H, and I. Through, through staff I recommendation. I second that. We, have a, we had a second. Yeah. Larry oh, seconded. Larry. Richard's motion, Larry seconded. Now we're all understanding it better. Does everybody feel comfortable with it? Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Are you following everything, Randy? Mike, I'm going to ask us to say that one more time so that we are all on the same page. If I'm following what you all are saying, is that you're grieving with staff's recommendation or concurrence that they can replace the second floor windows with the windows they proposed. That's the applicant the is willing to now compromise and go back and replicate with the use of the sashes that are there on the first floor to go back with the wood windows on the first floor. Or is that what we're all agreeing to? Yes, is I that believe so. Downstairs. Sessions. Only, yeah, Only. and then the others that are non original, you upstairs. said non original upstairs. On the, this, this you, staff. You, will, you will go with staff's concurrence that they're allowed to put the windows that they proposed, yes, and the applicant is okay with that. Okay, so yes, okay, so that was <laughs> so that's four, four, and two against. That motion. Okay. Okay. We have a motion and a recommendation for items J and A as recommended by staff. Do I understand the motion? Any question or discussion? Randy, does that, are you in line with us? Yes, I, okay. I believe we are. Yes. Yeah, um, Jay, Jay is replacing the doors that are up. Uh, replacing doors that are period appropriate in, is in keeping. So yes, we're okay. We're all okay. Right. Yes, okay. We, we're okay with that. Any discussion on that motion? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. Okay, L. There's on the front porch. 
<laughs> that one thing, did, did y'all notice that in those two photos, the one with Mrs. Keenaman, I think we can tell the one with Mrs. Keenaman in front, there are not stairs there. And we've got, we've taken photos of the day that would have shown them, but they were there in the one after. So somewhere, I'm going to guess one photo is 1880-ish. And if I, my best guess would be 1915 or so on the other, I would propose those stairs were built somewhere in there. They're clearly not original, but they're not those original photos. They're not brand new. They're not 20 years old. They've been there a while, but they're weird. And they were built between those two time periods. Over 50 years old. Oh, but you can look at it and they're weirdly cut in. They the window, the original window is wedged badly in. It's it's kind of a mess. Yeah. I think the Keenemans had, had moved out at that time and it was turned into like a not really a nursing home. It wasn't there was a nursing home because I just looked again today, uh, while we're sitting here and on the historic marker, it uses the words at one point was a nursing home. And we know for a fact it's also been a boarding house in yeah. addition to a B&B. &B. So those three things, people, neighbors came up today telling us, thank God y'all are fixing this. There used to be a boarding house and transients lived in it and critters were going in and out the windows. So I think it's been all three of those things. Yeah. So and we, that's uh, sure the But it was, my, my point was it wasn't part of the yeah. Keenaman's original no. home. It's no. hard to believe it was. They had moved was. out by the time yeah. that that was done. To well, it. and you can tell by where the windows are in the space from yeah. the main floor. The steps cover way that covered one of the And so, you know, it was, it's, it's obviously uh, an afterthought, let alone if someone was new to it, they would be a mistake. We don't want to memorialize that. So, can you turn your mic on? Based on the evidence the applicants have submitted, I, I would agree that those stairs aren't part of the original structure and don't add anything to the architectural character that's one opinion i'd like to hear some others i would like to hear anna's opinion because the staff recommendation is unclear as a statement I, I mean i think the discussion i would probably agree they weren't original um and probably added later when they were trying to give access i think maybe the same as the <clears throat> the stairs on the back do those connect they don't, Anna. There's no way in the interior. No, they actually the they don't because that's so, why they're they're both there too because yeah. you can't get from the front upstairs to the back upstairs. Yeah. So I think when it was cut up and there were multiple people living there, they didn't want access to every, you know trying to give some privacy and private access. So I do believe they were added later after the Keenemans. I'll make a motion application twenty one one forty three a to allow the applicant to remove the front stairs from the porch. I second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say aye. Okay. Moving on. We can take what care. Of, we can take care of. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I think we can take you. care of. Uh, I make a motion on application 21-143-A, items N, N, and O, to uh, approve the first staff recommendation. To, a, to approve application? Yes. Application first staff recommendation. First, excuse me. Thank you. I'll okay. second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. A discussion on that? Yes, please. The applicant has basically uh, updated the application to actually remove the chimney. So it's an item. These are the existing chimneys. He's only removing one. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. The it's a removal of the, the and we still want to do that. Not yeah. one on the back. That's correct. We still want to remove this this one on item N. Vote. But they want to remove it, and this is a recommendation to repair it. And that's the one, right? Am I right? There's multiple chimneys. I think that's under subject number. But that's the one they're going to repair. No. That's it's R. chimneys, multiple. There's multiple. R is the other one. Okay. On the west. This, this, is, yeah, this is the one that's on the inside part facing the interior of the property. In that back area where the pool area is, where no. we've had. 
think there's no, look at R. R is the other one. That's the one that's not visible from the right away. It's R. Mm -hmm. R is the one not visible. Okay. So N is the extremities that are visible from. Yeah, point. thank you. Thank you. You're correct. Okay. But we have no problem in repairing those other chimneys and keeping. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any, any more discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay. M and N. Okay, moving on to O. Nobody. Oh, that was O. Now we're on P. That's the glass. Can I get a motion? Uh, a clarification on O. Uh, just to uh, spell out not the entire roof to be changed to the wood shingles, but to maintain the existing metal roof. I'm fine with that. And per our, per our application, we showed it that way. What do we mean about the existing metal roof? Do you mean the rusty it, metal no, roof? No, it's on the, the on the back building. I know what you mean. You mean the little, right? Yes. But you mean the rusty that's there now? I don't care what the answer well, is. No, you're okay with replacing it with a new uh, roof of like type standing seam. Sure. But just for clarity, item P goes to the removal of the current exterior wall and then enclosing that back porch in the glass. That's, that's, that's what item P is about. Okay. Right. Yes. And staff recommends. Not that one. But that's item P, the other one, isn't it? Item P, yeah. If, if you go to page 193, that's, that's a nice representation of the to be part to be removed. So it's the south wall of the city room. And enclose the, the current porch into glass. That's what item B is. Correct. And that's just just that. But it's going to be the glass will be set back six or so inches. Right? We're fine with adding that in the motion. Okay. What is bark work would be? Yes, all the gingerbread, gingerbread. the details, of the porch on both the, the south east and southwest sides. We're fine with pushing the glass in. And what are you fine with as far as how far of a pushback? I pushed it in. Um, to be honest with you, I adjusted a detail and looked at it from center post into the center. From the center of the post to the exterior face of the glass, I looked at it today, five inches, and that leaves about two inches between uh, the metal and the back side of the columns. I can go a little bit more if, if you want a little more than that. Anybody got a comment on that? Oh, I think you have to have enough to maintain it to be able to paint it. Yeah, I mean, I can, I, I, I look at the detail, it just creates about a two inch by two inch pocket at the half columns. And I and I can still maintain and clean the glass and replace the glass of that. Okay. I, I, go I ahead, Terry. With uh, right with proof P, which stated if you look on page one ninety three, that the red line cuts through the middle of that door that's entering that porch. That red line was the existing back wall of the house. P says. Actual back structure to the main house and slash the court addition if it does not require the renewal of the court material or that back of the court. I can't be removed with that back of the piece. That staff's recommendation is to not remove the wall. So I'm, I'm, no, I'm just saying that item P is talks about the applicant's request to remove the wall and it closed. Well, that's no, that's, that's what, what we're talking all about. I'm saying is item P is about the removal of the back wall and the enclosure of the current porch of glass. Staff does not recommend approval, approval of removal of the wall. But that's just the way that's, that's not, I didn't put a motion on it. Cool. Yeah. 
So this is just this one that we're looking at right now. P is just this one. Yeah. So I think what Mr. Kaiser is suggesting is perhaps that the motion be read more uh, as per the applicant's request, with the exception that the glass on this uh, on this corner of the house and the southeast corner be pushed inward. I could go five to six inches. Yes, I think that's where this was headed, and I would appreciate it if, yeah, if you want to go that direction, yes. Randy, I got one question for you, and I'm sure you already looked at this. Did you ever look at just running the glass parallel with the kitchen wall and maintaining that small porch sure did. That window in the kitchen? Yeah, it was just awkward. And just having that flow around there, again, it gets back to the usability and the, and the sense of space inside, the, inside that area. But we did look at that, yes. Michael, were you making a motion? Was it, you? Did anybody else want to? <laughs> uh, yes, I'll make a motion on application 21-143A with respect to item P, approving the connection of the main house to the other historical building with glass, so long as the glass is set back seven inches don't you say five works for me i can go to six but beyond that it starts interrupting that open that opening six inches the kitchen. six i can do that set back uh and allowing the applicant to remove uh, what is the exterior or to place headers that's what i'm really assuming what you're doing uh place headers to remove the material on the rear wall of the sitting room, the original building, uh, because the vast majority of that material is not historic. And I make a motion to approve the application as submitted with the, with the change being the inset of the class. Would you include uh, the gingerbread and the original post should remain in place? Yeah, I would add that the gingerbread and all the trim uh, and around the porch be retained. And we're okay with that. Second. Okay, any discussion? Any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, moving on to Q. So flooring that looks like wood. You with the back porch, correct? It's okay. You just for you. The view. I'll make a motion on application 21-143A, items Q through S, be approved per staff recommendation. There's a second to that motion. Just one clarification that S is the removal of the exterior stair if uh, Information is provided that it's a 1990 edition. He has provided that tonight. Provided that. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Is that okay with you, Randy? I'm sorry. Let's get a little late. So if you could help <laughs> me on this a little bit. Uh, you got what you wanted. I, you got what you wanted. <laughs> is it good, Richard? No. Say no, yes. No, no, no it's no, per no. staff recommendation. I just Q is basically the flooring of that back porch instead of making a concrete would be to go with uh, flooring that's composite material that replicates the look of wood so and and that's not what we want to do that's that's not what you have submitted that is correct so we would like to i mean that porch is like six inches above the grade we have all that pool deck area around there we literally would have to create a somehow figure out how to create a vented um, space underneath a wood porch floor there. It, it's just very impractical to try to rebuild a wood porch floor there. And this whole sense of seamless connectivity between the interior of the house and the pool, having that, that pool material wrap up on the porch would be much preferred. Uh, if we did do a composite material there, I'd have to pour a slab there and try to figure out how to put it on top of a slab. But 
we're uh, trying to make our compromise here too. Right now, if y'all have seen, there's like rotted oil cloth that was on the front porches. So we're willing not to ask for any kind of composite material there, but to go real old school wood on all the front and side porches. And we would just ask in the back where we've got wet feet and swimming pool that and because of the grading, just the front, just in the back, not yeah, to do the, the, the point is it's in the back, it's not towards the street. The front porches are gonna have to be dug out, air space is created there, new wood framing and timbers and structure put in there. A lot of work. Everybody's on board with that. It's just this small this small porch in the back. It's just kind of gonna be engulfed with the new pool deck area and the house on the other side. Um, it's just gonna look like a piece of composite wood in the middle of the other floor finishes there. So yes, we're requesting since it's on the rear part of the house and to make it more serviceable and blend in with the rest of the exterior of the house back there, have it and not be required to go back with a composite material, which wouldn't be wood anyway. Okay. Excuse me. We, we have a motion. You're talking about the same porch that we had there in the previous item P? No. If we could pan up on this, on this, if this is the porch we're talking about, this very is this little this section of porch here that would be remaining that that little L shape there. If you look at the site plan, all the new the outdoor courtyard pool and everything will butt right up to that. Would be six inches below that uh, porch floor, so we would just like to replace that with with the same material that we would use around the uh, pool the pool deck area. And yes, it it is it is the floor of. A porch was there, but our feeling is it's on the back side of the house. It's not facing towards the street. Right. But everything from the porch floor up, the porch columns, roof, everything would be restored back to gingerbread. Everything else would be restored back to its original condition. So you, you could screen it over concrete. We could. Yeah. And we could, but we'd be putting composite, composite or fake wood over concrete. So I guess my thought is it, to add on to that porch, aren't you? Yes, we are. I don't see that specifically in the application. Am I missing it? Because you're adding on about six feet on there. That is correct. We are. Yes. But We're asking to extend that about six feet to, to get over that that door area. That's correct. Okay. I just want to make sure we get it because it's not. I don't see it in here. I I don't take exception exception to that. That's correct. We are. Okay, so we have a motion and a second, a second to approve Q, R, and S per staff recommendation, which to which the applicant is opposed to Q. We haven't discussed R and S, but we do need to get to a vote on this motion that we have on the floor, which includes the porch, the chimneys, and the exterior stair. So we can vote it yay or nay, and then come back with another motion if you want to. Is that is that clear? Does that make sense? Okay, so all in favor say aye. All opposed, same sign. Okay, that motion is denied. We need to come back with a, you want to address Q by itself? Since yeah, that's another a, shot here. <laughs> what make you a don't? motion on Application 21-143A, item Q, to allow the applicant to pour a concrete porch in place of the existing wooden porch and to extend the porch six foot to the east. Approximately. As, as shown in the drawings, but not specifically requested. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Did you pick one, Shelby? Okay. Discussion on just item Q. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay, moving on. R, S, somebody? Well, R has been removed. Yeah, R. Based on the applicant's removal. Okay, but then we still need a motion on it. As soon as you vote on it. As to what? We, we can include S with it. Okay, include R and S. Someone make that into a motion. 
Can you do T also? I make a motion on application 21143A to uh, accept the applicant's withdrawal of R and to approve their request to remove the exterior st stair as provided in S. Okay. Is there a second? Very second. Any discussion? Are I clear on the motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. Make a motion on application 21143A item T to approve the applicant's request to use a zero clearance fireplace in order to save as much of the back wall as possible and to install two three foot wide. Same height doors as the windows proposed on the east wall, matching and configuration in a contemporary style. We're talking about. Sorry, may I ask a question? Please. I, I, I maybe I missed this, but the discussion or my understanding was we they still want to do the double doors. We're okay with using the same style doors as the metal doors everywhere else, but they still want a set of doors, not a three foot wide door okay. so they they're they're willing to compromise on this type of door but they still want the french the french style doors and give the, the gas fireplace yeah we could, we're okay with the gas fireplace keeping the wall on the exterior and and uh, top and bottom but they still want the french type doors okay. on each side of the fireplace yeah yeah but richard make his yeah. motion and we'll come back around to we're the discussion stick with the motion um We'll get to discussion. I'm going to leave the motion as a three foot door uh, to match the existing openings uh, in style to match the contemporary openings as proposed on the east wall in the sitting area. South. 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 That's where we got derailed earlier. What wall? Which wall? South. That is the south wall. Okay. The left, left <laughs> wall of the building. <laughs> Okay. That would be the living room. Okay. Do we have a second to this motion? Okay. We have a motion and a second. So I'm not sure what wall. Help me. It's that wall that we're looking at right there is that. Okay. Got it. Thing to match the style, but with a door this as wide as the existing window. So keep the same width, but with a contemporary door. That's matching the material of all the other windows. That's okay. what we're saying. We we would be willing to do. No, but we want them wide. Yeah, that's what Anna's saying. Same. No. That's not what the motion says. No, that's, that's not what the motion. Three says. foot width. Three foot width. Yeah. That's what the window is. That and that's what your motion is. Motion is the window. That's the motion. motion is. Yes. Yes. So discussion, Randy. The reason I'm thinking three foot wide, if you go five foot and your other windows are nine foot, you're not going to line up. It's going to look clear. You mean the width of the door? Upstairs. Yeah. Upstairs. The That's the window. Upstairs to the downstairs. And if all your other panels are in three foot sections, you're going to have a two and a half foot section and that's going to look odd. I don't disagree with that, but the only way you're going to see that is is to go to the rear of the property. They're right there next to each other on that inside L. Are you talking about the, the on the on the first floor on the on? Yes, the width of the glass will be different, but we're saying I think we're saying we're okay with the same style of of door, which is basically almost all glass. So, I guess I'm not following the concern there. Just the width of the door doesn't line up with the width of the window, right? The window above it. You mean the window on the second floor? The window in the sitting room. Because you, you're nine foot wide on those windows, right? I, I'm sorry, on the on the width or, or what are you? Width. Three, three foot panels is what you said. The doors, yeah, the doors in the living room are going to be more like 30 inch panels because I can't get a 6-0 do double door in there. Right, but the sitting rooms are three foot. Correct. I, I don't see an issue with that. You're, I'm sorry, I'm confused. Hey, Richard, can you, can we look at page 193 and just be specific about which wall? Okay. 
the wall right there in the middle picture where the wooden door, the wooden colors work. So. Oh, it's not protected. No. So we'd, what we're saying is we'd be fine with going and not doing the wood doors if that's if that is a compromise with the board using the same type of doors as richard said he built on my my comments earlier this evening that they'd clearly be new doors the same height but the width would be would be different but the height would we can match the height to the same doors as is over here at the sitting room so ultimately the glass would look the same in both those areas Anna, could you order just a little bit? The, 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 the door down. Let's see the, so front. You want to see the front door. More to the front. You want to see the front of the house. Yeah. So, Richard, just a clarification on, on your motion is that if you would basically limit the size of those, the new doors, because we're basically converting window to a door. Right. And have the width match the windows on the north side of that room. Yeah. be more balanced be more balanced and considering that's the oldest part of the building I think, right. we, I think we're given a lot already on two doors to go in the oldest part of the building that's a motion yeah and i seconded that we can die okay now. any we have a motion and a second so any other discussion all in favor say aye aye, aye. Mm -hmm. opposed same side aye so it's four to one. So that's T. As long as T. Okay, so you. Somebody make a motion related to you, please. You is concerning, just for clarification, it's concerns four, four walls, correct? Four entry points or four, so it's the three on the, on the east side and one on the south side, correct? That's you. So if I could summarize, I think where the applicant is at is they're still requesting the glass that we're seeing in this image here, but they're willing to compromise on the glass on the south wall of the back building and go back to the original window there. So you literally have you have the same and uh, the same con original same condition you have now on both the west and south walls of that building, but they're still requesting the the openings and the glass that they as presented on the east side. You make that into motion. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting too late, but you're not. You probably could. Sure you would, yeah. Sure. That, that's your job. I'm making a motion to approve the window openings on the east side, the left side of the building, as presented to maintain the opening on the west side of the kitchen structure as original south. and south. west and south yes, is sir. what they're saying they, they would be willing to compromise and leave as is west and south as original yeah, i'll second that okay, as motion. wrong what did you say richard as the south and the west is original and the rest of it as wrong presented okay as applied, as applied. That's correct. I concur with that. And that's my understanding. The applicant's will is, is okay with that. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Any other? Yeah. So this point of clarity. So your motion, Richard, is to approve the application for those three openings: the the back auxiliary building, this the closed porch, bottom picture. Yeah, yeah, and the new removal of the wall and the inclusion of that. The kitchen structure that's not disputed. Nine foot window. Yeah. And we're compromising and going back and getting rid of the glass that we had the discussion with Mike about with the uh, on that gable wall. We'll go back and go back to the original Does window. Motion include the inset of that glass. Yes, on this yeah. side, we've already 
yes, we would do the inset there the same as we did on the west side. That's the way we describe it. With motion and a second. Any other discussion or clarification, Michael? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, make a reference to section 3.3. Introductory statement, um, as well as some of the other sections cited, cited therein, as a basis for deviating from our standards uh, of removing historic material. Uh, all of what we're talking about approving will not be visible uh, from any of the public right of ways, or et cetera. Uh, that we bring that as an exception, uh, as well as the other information or other uh, uh, matters that I've discussed before about what really is historic through. Okay. 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 Any other discussion? A motion and a second for item U. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. Okay. We still so four to one. Sure. Okay. If I understand it correctly, that is all of application 21143A. Right? Y'all with me? Okay. Let's move on to item 21-143B. 413, 413 West Creek. Do we Anna, a, can we take a quick break? Yeah, let's what? take a, a quick break. break. Just sure. Did I ask you to break? I have it up so we um get for those buildings. I don't have them with me. I only have them in here. Yes. Yes. They're in the oven. They should be in the oven. Uh, sleeping areas. Okay. So they're in sleeping areas. Yeah. I'm not the only thing I'm speaking to is exposure. That's the only. That's the only. That's the only. That's the only. That's it. Because look here. Uh, she does talk about nice. Yeah, 
average fit from the 50% to the square footage now? Like, you know, or not? Yeah. 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 Okay, let's reconvene. <laughs> Calling it back to order. Gentlemen, let's reconvene the meeting. You need a <laughs> start calling names. Gentlemen, <laughs> we're going to reconvene the meeting. Starting with application 21-143B, 413 West Creek. Anna? Application 21-143B, 413 West Creek, R1 zone, uh, highway rate and main structure proposal. The applicant is requesting certificate of appropriateness for the following. A, site features such as front gates, sidewalks, and fencing will be new to match the original. The existing hand dug well and southwest corner of the building will be cleaned out. A new gray stone, well, stone wall will, with glass will be added. The original cistern near this area will have its top restored and authentic period pump reinstalled. Item B, the pergola and brick fireplace with a chimney that was added in 1989 will be removed. Item C, existing wood shed will be removed, a windmill will be re relocated, and an existing water well cap. The wood shed, which existed behind the main house in the 1989 rehab, was disassembled and reconstructed in its current location in 1990 using salvaged and new lumber. Item D, a masonry courtyard wall and fountain, which were added in 1990, will, will be removed. Pool and pool house. A new pool and outdoor living area will be added to the southeast corner of, of the main house. Directly south of the pool, there will be a new pool house. The location and scale of the pool house is intended to be subordinate to the prominence of the main house. The simple gable roof is similar to the type on the main house, and a simple, smooth, painted wood trim will complement the trim of the main house. Windows and doors will be contemporary aluminum and the exterior of the pool house will be stucco. Covered walkway. The covered walkway is intended to be a simple, relatively nondescript structure 
constructed of steel framing and in scale as if framed in wood and capped with stained wood roof. The garage, the garage is the larger of the two new buildings proposed for the site. For this reason, it is pulled back to the rear of the property in order to place as much of the open space between the main house and subsequently offset the scale difference between the two structures. The gable roof has a ridge of 25 feet, seven inches, and will be compatible with the roofs of the main house, and the roofing will be standing seam metal. Exterior siding will be a smooth lap siding and trimmed with smooth wood trim to match the pool house. Windows will be the same type as those proposed in the main house and garage. Okay, so I've cited site layout, which is important in this one. Um, this is a large um, lot. Um, and so the lot coverage comes into play, and we have to define accessory dwelling unit, which means somebody can live in it, okay? So the area above the garage is an ADU. So the entire garage structure is an ADU. In my original recommendation, I separated those two. However, a building permit would just be issued for, for that two-story building. So it's, we can't separate them out. So it's just an ADU. The pool house is gonna be an accessory structure. Um, so all that to say, items 3.41, 3.43, sorry. Um, no, 3.41 G and H, just to make sure that there's difference. So an ADU, it says, shall not cover a larger footprint of the lot than the primary building. All other accessory buildings shall not exceed 800 square feet or 50% of the primary building square footage, whichever is greater, okay? So in one, we're looking at footprint, ADU footprint, accessory building, square footage. In my original application, those got a little wonky. Um, and I did not cite the height restrictions on ADU. So I want to add 3.43 accessory buildings, um, height, item C, um, yes, item C. It says design new buildings to be subordinate and not visually overpower the surrounding historic buildings. The maximum height for an accessory building of a, on a historically designated parcel relates to the preservation priority. And this is a high rated, so it says required a maximum of, of one story, 18 feet in height. Let's see, and it carries over on page 3-60 of your design guidelines. Okay, so the recommendation, the proposed site work, uh, including removal of non-historic features, is appropriate. The proposed new masonry walls should be pushed back behind the rear of the historic house instead of attaching on the east side. The lot measures 0.58 acres and slightly larger than a typical 100 by 200 town lot. The design guidelines require that accessory buildings, okay, we just talked about that. Um, and we do need a clarification on the footprint size and square foot. Um, so I'll let the uh, architect tell you tell us those exact measurements. Um, the pool house is considered an auxiliary building, not an ADU. So on that we go by square feet, not the footprint. And the covered walkway is not conditioned and is mis minimal in visual impact. Staff recommends approval. The materials and styles of the new structures are in keeping with the design guidelines. Um, and the mass and scale need further evaluation. The development of this lot is not in keeping with the traditional pattern, but does take advantage of the corner lot access to the rear of the property. Thank you, Anna. Brandon. All right, thank you. Yes, I'm Brandon Weinheimer with SKT Architects as well. Uh, I am here to speak about the, the uh, uh, the accessory building size with respect to section 3.4.1 and uh, to to add to Anna's comments yes it is our understanding that the pool house is considered an accessory building uh, therefore 
section H or paragraph H applies, uh, in which the area of the, uh, the pool house cannot exceed 50% of the primary building total square footage. And so the total square footage of the existing house as it currently sits is 3,802 square feet. So 50% of that would be 1,901 square feet. The pool house area is currently 1,478 square feet. So it is less than 50% of the primary building square footage. Yes. yes. The existing structure, not the proposed structure. The existing structure, square footage. 3802. 3802, yes. That includes the porches. That does not include that back accessory uh, building, the archive room. For clarification, Anna, didn't you say footprint, not total square footage? So the accessory the building, yeah. the mm -hmm. pool house is accessory building, so the square footage rule applies. That's section H. H. The other building, back building, that's the garage and the dwelling unit, it, it is an accessory dwelling unit, so section or paragraph G applies, okay, and so that would be the footprint. So I, I know they're calling it a pool house, but it has a bathroom in it, it has a kitchen space in it, so how does it not fall under an accessory dwelling unit? Um, so when we looked at uh, this, we had some conversations on, on the two structures. Um, when we look at accessory structures for pool houses, you will see bathrooms and toilets are often common into that because as you are coming, entering the pool, getting out, changing rooms. Um, I believe we had talked about a, uh, we wouldn't care about a sink, but we were looking more of a, a kitchenette, I believe. So that's where we had said, I'm sorry, not a kitchen. Not a kitchen so real, there is for cooking, just it's not a kitchen. Right, so that was the interpretation we made with working with the applicant and, and considering these was the, the garage was the guest house, the ADU, the pool house was a pool house. They could have a sink you know, and a wet bar if they wanted to entertain, but the removing of the stove and, and taking out the full kitchen would, would change that definition on our interpretation. Okay, I was just clarifying because the future owner could do something different. Uh, they could and we would probably handle that at building permit stage, so. Brandon, are you through? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, well, again, re regarding the, the garage and, and dwelling unit uh, in the back of the property, uh, since that is an accessory dwelling unit, uh, G would apply. And so, yes, the uh, in this case, the footprint of that garage accessory building uh, cannot exceed the footprint of the, the primary structure. And so the footprint of the primary structure on the, on the property is 2,232 square feet. Again, that is porches, everything uh, included in that footprint. Uh, the square footage of the garage, or excuse me, the, the footprint, the garage, is 2,250 square feet. So it does exceed that footprint by 18 square feet, which we can easily reduce that 18 square feet um, out of the garage structure to meet, to be within those, those guidelines. What about the height? Because that's a new one to me. That that is something that wasn't discussed. It wasn't. Yeah, it was overlooked. Um, but it's it's clear in the design guidelines, height and massing item C. That are a maximum of one story and eighteen feet in height. Well, clearly this building doesn't meet that that criteria. So. Uh, Anna, does that stipulate the total height or in building code, we look at heights at the midpoint of the slope part of the roof. One thing we did do on this building is it's kind of a story and a half. It's not a full story building. The, the uh, living spaces are kind of tucked under the roof as much as possible. So is there any is there any leeway there as far as the definition of the height? Does it need to be to the ridge or the average height? Of the roof, which is in building code, we go correct. We by go the by average building height. code, correct. I think if we go by the average height, I think we're probably going to be in there under under that number. It's not two stories, not No, we intentionally it, it, it will give you this. It, it's a pretty large building, but we intentionally put it in the back corner of a large lot to get it away from the historic building as much as possible. 
Uh, and also, again, to get the traffic into it from the side street, not from the main, main street in front of that. The other thing we did was to try to reduce the massing of the building was go to uh, a story and a half where we tuck these living areas as much as possible underneath um, that roof area. You can kind of see that well in the, in the building section views. So this building adds, adds, adds a, it brings a lot to the table to make this property work. There's, there's not enough bedrooms in the main house to make this work for their family. So somewhere on the property, we had to find uh, additional guest room. There, there really was no way to get it inside the main house. So that's how this evolved. It, it, it was creating um, sleeping areas for the family that we simply can't achieve in the main house. We'd rather not have to spend the money on it necessarily, but we got basically a two bedroom house and we got five kids with things. So that's our problem. We're trying to figure out where the grandkids come and where they go. Okay. Do you guys have any questions for Randy or Brandon? I have a question for Randy, if, if you don't mind. Go ahead. I, I know we've worked on this project and we've, we've come a long way, so I'd, I'd hate to see something like this, you know kind of derail us right now. So I'm going to spitball a little bit, Randy. Um, we had some conversations about the pool house being considered the ADU and, and the, the, the garage being the guest house or uh, uh, the accessory structure. Um, you know, if, if those were to flip and maybe the restrooms or the, the full kitchens or whatever flip over, would that would that help our issue if we recalculated those square footages and, and footprints? I mean, I mean, I just, I'm, I'm you know, just trying to, you know, we had some flexibility on those two buildings the way we did that. So You're I, saying take the pool kitchen out of the guest house. Put it in the pool and house. The, the pool house is ADU. Correct. So the, the so pool the, house would be the ADU. You it would meet the height. The height. You have the height restriction on that. But there's not an section. The pool house is a one story. That would meet. It's the height of the garage and the living quarters above it. It's, yeah, but, but only for ADUs. I if it's not an ADU, it's not subject to that height requirement. So uh, my thought process was if if the but but it's subject to a fifty percent rule. Right. That's why I was right trying to see if we could. So it helps us in one way, but it's going to hurt us in another. Okay. So I saw again. Yeah. Just yeah. I, I didn't because mean to inter interject, but I was just kind of trying to figure it out if we could. Figure that out. I guess my question would be, could the board consider some leeway on this height, considering that it, it, by building code, we go by the average height of a roof. I, I don't know if it's stipulated or clarified in the guidelines, but it is a, it, if you look at it, it's a story and a half building. It's not a full two story building, but we can't get the living spaces in. If we, we've got to have enough garage space, but we need, we need living space. We need bedrooms. There's no way we could get that all on, a, on, on the footprint on the ground. As Brandon said, we're what, less than, tw little, less than 20 feet over now. So there's no way we can make this work. It's 26 foot height, right? To, 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 the, to the ridge. So yeah. what I'm asking is that the board could give us some leeway and interpret that height, at least in this case, as, as building code interprets height, it's at the average height of the, of the, of the roof. And what is that? Randy, you want to calculate credit? Randy, I got some questions. So, I mean, we, we wrote this guideline to help prevent SDRs from taking over town, basically, mm -hmm. and prevent giant buildings in people's backyards. So, sure, we can't give one person a variance just because you have some space and, and tell the next person no. Uh, the second question is, why did you go with a 10-foot plate? Why not drop the garage to an 8-foot plate, 7-foot doors, and you can get 2-foot right there it's real quick? Uh, because most people have big vehicles and trucks that, I mean, I couldn't get a lot of vehicles in there. I mean, I got the biggest one you get, and it goes in a seven-foot door. Well, I guess what, we, what we're looking for is they, too, want to get their vehicles off the street and out of the driveway. And large vehicles you can't get in seven-foot doors. So I'm waiting on Brandon's yeah. calculation. Midpoint of I, don't think we can I mean, we could we could get it down a little well, bit. Not the way the guidelines written. Well, does it? 
Uh, I mean, it, does, it says required maximum one story, 18 feet in height. Doesn't really specifically, I mean, this is a guideline standard relating to a building process. And there is something there. To me, the bigger issue is, or more important consideration, it says the design, the, the, the spirit, the policy is that the new building should be subordinate and not visually overpower. And while it is a big structure, it's way set back from the original home. Uh, in fact, you might not even notice it on Creek. Uh, you would, of course. Uh, but I, I, I have some pause because it does fulfill the spirit of the rule, and that is trying not to have something so big next to the structure. Um, yeah, I have a question for Daniel. If they replatted it, Daniel, could it be considered a separate building on a separate lot, and then they could do what they wanted and still be legal? Oh, sorry, we were having a discussion. Could they replat it? Could they cut this off into a separate lot and then build it? But on that, it might be of some help because and this might be what you were going to say. They went a long way because um, this was not our listing when we bought it. My daughter, Savannah, had it under contract for a while with some B&B &B buyers, and they wanted to divide it so they could make a unit in the front, unit in the back, and just for whatever good, you might have already been aware of a lot of this, but it went all the way, even with city trying to support the division at that point, trying to save the house, it went to variance, and it was a 2-2 vote, and a 2-2 vote fails. So maybe the story would be different if it weren't for investors. I don't know, but if that's of any help, at least one person tried that. Shelby has something. Yeah. Oh, I'd be glad to do that if that would fix it. I just don't know. Shelby has something to input. This property is zoned R1, and I just want to know. And pre a previous applicant, as Ms. Tammy had mentioned, did attempt to do a subdivision. The size of the property does not allow for a legal subdivision, so they had to obtain a variance to the Zoning Board of Adjustment. As Ms. Tammy had mentioned, ultimately that request failed through a 2-2 vote. Um, their request was a little different at that time, but they haven't considered this exact application, but but that particular request, then what was that, two years ago now, um, failed at that time. Okay, thank and you. And I, I wanted to clarify, Tammy, this is a, currently it's plotted as two lots, correct? Yeah. Is or was it? It was one lot. Okay. And the reason why it wasn't accepted would be where the, where the smaller home is on that's closer to uh, uh, Edison uh, interferes with that replant. The, the lot was big enough. Correct me if I'm wrong. The lot was big enough by far. Yeah. To do it into two seventy five hundred lots. The problem was the setback. It was like where we don't put the setback that we were expecting. And by the time you move the setback here, the historic building now the lot's not big enough. That is. From memory is where they have the problem, not the size of the lot. Correct. My my apologies, I misspoke. That is correct. It was the placement of the building did not allow for a legal subdivision without movement of the existing structures. I guess comment from kind of going on with from what Richard said, the our intent of putting the guidelines in place was to stop massive buildings in, in the district and overpowering their original structure. That's the first thing. And second thing, driving around that area. I just had a little bit of pause on the size of the structure because it, it, you think about the, the context of the neighborhood and it's hard to find a, a building at that big. I mean, that's bigger than most of the houses around at Edison. So that's um, something now, that's else. That's why we said the context of the, the neighborhood. To the back corner. Yeah. Trying to keep well, it. I mean, but you have a neighbor back behind you as well, right? And you know, across the street. So that, that was my pause, just on the, the mass and scale of it. But further down Creek, you have the massive structure of G. Hardy's house. I think that's out of the district. Like a couple blocks away. Yeah. I'm just thinking of it. Yeah. Okay. Bordering. Okay. So can somebody form a, more, a motion from this discussion, or do you all need to talk about more? Here's Mary. I'm thinking we should make a motion so we can go home. No, I'm not. Do you think we should go against the guidelines that we just wrote? No. Are you talking on the height definition? Yes. 
Okay, so we did look um, in the guidelines. It does match our building our building code height at the midpoint. So if there's a way that the applicant could lower the, the you know, I mean, we can play a or, foot. We can we can work with a foot, maybe two feet. But we can't produce another building because we can't get another building on the site. If we can't make this one big enough, there's there's no there's no way to get the bedrooms we need. So, what Jason's saying is that foot will put it in with compliance with our new standards. Yeah, we can we can we can manipulate it that much. We can manipulate that, the architecture that, that much. Have a problem with the pool house. Maybe, maybe we can get that off the list. Is, is everyone comfortable with well, the deputy change the needs? Just pick one at a time. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm for giving some movement here. A different block. <laughs> so, is, does anyone have a problem with the the pool house, the size, the classification as a? Why don't you make it as a motion, David? I'm going to, I'm going to do that. Okay. Okay. So, I make a motion to approve application 21-143B413. Uh, West Creek Street pool house only as submitted. You could add the walkway in there. Yeah, um, items, what is it? A through A. A through D. Full house walkway. We'll, we'll come back to that. And got to that yet. So full house and walkway. That's the that's the most. And your motion is to accept it as a, as yes. presented. That's my motion as presented to the. Okay, so we have a motion to accept right. a motion and a second. To accept the pool house and the covered walkway as presented in the application. Discussion? It, it apparently meets the, the our guidelines specifically. So that's okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay, that passes. Okay. Yeah. Mike, you want to talk about the wall? Yeah, I make a motion. Oh, oops. Go. I make a motion uh, on application number 21-143-B to accept the staff recommendation finding on the removal of non-historic features as being appropriate, but as requiring the new masonry wall to be pushed back behind at least away from the corner of the historic house instead of attaching on the east side. Okay. Do we have a second to that motion? They've got the wall coming out of the building, and I want it set, I want it back behind the corner where you see the full historic building. So we have a motion and a second. We get something up that illustrates this motion is that it can you live with me bringing it back to that corner otherwise it would it would go past the back corner of the house and it's kind of awkward you would leave an opening to the back porch could you be okay if we bring it back equal in line with the back wall of the house i think we could we could make that work because other we start reducing I think it's, it would be awkward with the back porch if we if we pull it further south than the back corner of the of the, wall, of the house. Could we could we say you bring it back no more than in line with the back corner of the house? Uh, no, in okay. my motion, I I, I want to no. see the corner of the house. This is this uh, is the motion and the motion. We have a second. Any other discussion? And and I'm and I'm I'm. Citing uh, section 3.3 E is the reason for doing that. Yeah. 
would you all accept an offset in that wall to where we just offset it uh, right there where that gate is and allow us to keep the rest of the wall yeah. where it's at? Yeah, we could offset it, say, pull that, uh, pull that section of wall that's to the left side of that gate southward, pull the gate southward, and then turn back northward. In other words, get, get, you, can see, you could see that corner of the house, but we could keep the majority of the wall back where we've got it. Great idea. I think we could do that. So would you amend? Is that a six-foot wall? Yeah, Mike, that's kind of what we were thinking. Yes. Well, so they they get reduced, and it's probably true for most of us. So, Mike, Michael, yeah, would you me. amend your motion? Yes, uh, I'll try. <laughs> I make a motion on application twenty one one four three B to propose site work, including removal of non historic features. As being appropriate is, is approved as, as requested, but that the new masonry wall be allowed to remain where it is as requested, except as it meets the corner of the existing structure, and it would be a six foot offset. Or what, what much of an offset do you want for the gate to go? You mean east, uh, east, Correct. east, west? Correct. Six feet? Six feet. It would be a six foot offset, meaning that the gate portion of the, of the wall sets behind the corner of the house. I think we can achieve that. Okay. Mike, we, will you second his amended motion? Okay. So we have an amended motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Now? Oh, it says masonry wall. What, what is the masonry? Stucco. Stucco. We weren't going to induce any stone. We were just going to make it stucco. Well, it's not common. Well, it probably is somewhere. Knowing Randy, it's defined somewhere. I, I, I'm sorry. I thought I did define it or describe it. If I didn't, that would be the answer. Is it would, if you want to put that in your motion, you're welcome to do that. But the intent was it was going to be stucco. You think we need to change the motion? Are you drawing the images show stuff though to me? Our, my intent would be we make it out of concrete block and we then we stucco it. Right. Okay, we're good with it. Okay, now the garage. So, so I, I think it's it's reasonable and doable that we could reduce the height well within uh, the stipulations of going by the half mid height of the roof. We can achieve that. We can easily get the square footage reduced within the guidelines. We can achieve both of those things. You, you're saying you can achieve them using the what Jason mentioned as the building code definition for height. Is that what that you're saying? That is correct. And Jason said that's if, the same definition for height that we have in our standards and guidelines. Okay, can somebody form that into a motion? It conflicts with our guidelines? No, it's the same as our guidelines. Yeah. For the 18 foot. In our guidelines, is an average roof height. Yep, basically like a midpoint between the roof and the plane. And we can achieve that. And that's so I know a little bit about the building height issue because we brought this to PNZ because we found a discrepancy in our code. But according to Kyle, that's the way we've been doing it for 14 plus years. And that's why Anna copied our definition so that they matched. So, yeah. So can we just do a motion to accept changes that the applicant made in reference to the height? 
into the footage? Or do we have to put it all in numbers? Randy, just one more question. Sure. I know it's tired and everybody's tired and it's late. Uh, is there any willingness to turn the garage where you don't have support garage? Or, I mean, you don't have these big mass from um, the street and you turn it? Yeah, that's a real good question. We absolutely looked at that. Uh, but when we started to look at how much hardscape we and driveway we had to do to do that, we were just giving up an awful lot of the the beauty of the property doing that. So this was the most physically efficient way to get them in and out. Uh, I'd like to point out that there is a courtyard wall planned on the street side over here, and there's a secure there's a security gate there. So the same. Um, type of stucco wall that we were doing around the pool. We were going to do the same thing here. Now here we were just going to do a four foot wall. But if it if that would help if that would make you feel better to go higher, it might be something the applicant would be would be open to if you wanted to screen that more. I put four height, four foot height just to screen any vehicles that were in the driveway. The owner's intent is not to have cars in the driveway on the street. They want to get them in the building. But to do that we need a we need a footprint that big to do it. But we did look at that. We absolutely did look at that. Okay. Uh, the other tools in my toolbox as an architect is I, I went to story and a half and I broke up that mass of the roof with the gable. I tried to do what I could with the massing of the building to, to try to uh, hide that as much as we could. And we put an offset in the front of the garage so it wasn't one straight massive wall. Okay, make a motion. Make a stand okay, thanks. I'll make a motion to approve application 21-143B regarding the garage structure with the caveat that all um, Sections of our guidelines, including 3.4.1 and 3.4.3, .3, are followed in regards to footprint and height. We can do that. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay. We need a motion to approve the material for the new structure. On page 227. Yeah, all the side guys. I'm sorry. Was there a question on the motion? I don't think. Did you make a motion? Oh, no, no. My previous motion. Oh, that included the materials also? Yes. I'm sorry. Sure, my, my motion mistake. was to, to follow our guidelines. And you have it. You have the, I'm sorry. I apologize. Okay. That's all of 21-143B. Now we move on to 21-143C. Changes to existing ADU. Anna? Okay. The applicant is requesting a C of A. Um, for the original cottage. Um, it is an original building that also went extensive renovations in 1989, and a small porch over the north face was added. Um, a, the large two story addition against the south wall of this building, which was built in 1990, will be removed and replaced with a small one story addition covered with a standing sea metal roof and faced with stucco on the exterior walls. B, the existing windows, which are no longer original to the building, will be replaced with new four over four like fiberglass wood windows that will match the original windows in size and depth. C, the existing exterior wood siding and trim will be repaired and, repa and repainted. Item D, the front porch railing, which is not historic, will be removed and the wood porch floor will be rebuilt. Item E, the front door and front porch trim will be restored. Item F, the wood shingle and V green metal roofing will be replaced with the new standing seam metal roof. C, 
staff's recommendation. Item A, staff recommends approval of the removal of the non-historic edition and replacement with a simple modern edition. Item B, staff concurs with the applicant and recommends replacement of the non-original windows with plaid windows to match the others. Item C, restoration of wood siding and trim is appropriate. Item D, removal of non-historic porch features is appropriate. Item E, restoration of the doors is appropriate. Item F, metal roofs without ridge caps are in keeping with the standards for medium rated structures. Of note, yeah, this cottage was re-rated previously, and it, so it has a medium rating, not a high main house. Just that that really big, bad, ugly is going to go away. Sorry, thank goodness. Yep. Okay, motion? I make a motion to approve. If you, I make a motion on application 21-143C. To approve the application as submitted. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Tammy. Thank Let's you all. <laughs> okay, moving on to application 21 148 300 West Main. Anna? This was brought at the request of um, HRB members at the last meeting. This is a re rating within the district of a mid century property at 300 West Main. Uh, the applicant is the city and re rating from low to either medium or high. And I've cited the section of the preservation priority rating describing high, medium, and low ratings. Staff's finding the recommendation. The building at 300 West Main was designed by San Antonio architect Ed Nicholson uh, and built in 1962 by Temple Lumber Company. Leo Blanchard Jr. was the project manager for Temple Lumber. Fred Matheson, founder of Community Savings and Loan Association in 1934, was president of the Savings and Loan at the time the new modern building was construction constructed. The formal opening was July 1st, 1962 with a gala open house. The bank building retained several mid-century and international style features such as prominent brick chimney, tall glass panels at the front with minimal exterior reveals, low sloped roof with protruding cantilevered gable, the use of Roman brick, thin and long. This style emphasized the creating of structures with ample windows and open floor plans with the intention of opening up interior spaces and bringing the outdoors in. The development pattern on the lot with this modern building was typical for the time. The building's location on the lot was pushed back from Main Street and the site focused on parking. When the building was surveyed in 2002, it was not yet 50 years, old, years of age and was not eligible for consideration as for medium or high. While Fredericksburg is not known for mid-century architecture, there are several prominent buildings with prominent features. This 196, this building in particular speaks to the success of the community savings and loan in the 1960s and holds a prominent corner lot on Main Street in the heart of the historic district. Staff recommends a re-rating to protect the exterior of the building. And of note, I did speak, this did recently change hands, um, but I was able to speak with a PNC representative um, who had no opposition to re-rating it. We get a motion. What is the staff recommendation for re-rating it to higher medium? I think it retains a lot of original features. Um, I think it's a good uh, example of a mid-century. So I could see a high. Make a motion to on application 21148 to re-rate the building as fine. A second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay, sure. Who's yes, I'm sorry, who seconded that motion? I Thank forgot. You. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> okay. No, we ran out of pages. Need a motion to adjourn. Oh, wait, 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 no. Priorities for 2022. <laughs> I told y'all that was going to happen. We got a bigger district. Okay, you don't want to talk about those. You can email me. <laughs> what, what did you say? You can email me. Okay. <laughs> All your priorities for
for Historic Review Board for 2022, please email Anna. She'll compile them and we'll have them at another meeting. I need a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay. Tell Jim to go to bed with it. He's been sleeping. Keep in mind we're still recording. We are, we are still live recording, but uh, that was a good job tonight. That was a lot of complicated stuff. So Y'all did awesome. Thank you. And a good job on that staff report <laughs> and putting all that together, too.